What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things. Listen, you do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss this. CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back get back CAP zapping all you hoes away like get back 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 CAP zapping all you hoes away like CAP zapping all you hoes away like That is the only time I have ever eaten granola bars. I, I do not eat them of my own free will. And, and now it's time for story time. Y'all come on in the classroom. I know I'm late. I had a family emergency today that needed my immense attention. I'm so sorry class is late. I'm so sorry class is late. I was actually gung-ho for the talent show about class today. I'm so sorry Oliver had a family emergency that I need to stop what I was doing and make sure that I see it to the family emergency. So. Thank you, first of all, again, I apologize to everybody for the mishap. I know we had some time mishap. I originally said it was 12, then Jayla reminded me that we agreed to one, so I told y'all it was one, and then one came, and then hell broke loose, but everything is fine, and we are here to get into the things of the mother-loving things. My name is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy Q to reporting for duty, here to do the Lord's work once again. And today we are talking to Jayla from Cycle 5 of America's Next Top Model. You know, Jayla is only our second chat from Cycle 5. So this is very critical and important to our entire top model anthology because we've only heard about Cycle 5 from Lisa D'Amato. So I'm excited. Are y'all hoes excited? Without further ado, let me send her a request now. Hey, Amanda, what are you doing? Jayla? I just saw her pop up in the pop up in the thing. Yep, there she is. Hi. Hi. How are How you? How are you? I'm good. I think I misunderstood which direction my camera was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Flip it the other way. Okay. Let's see if I can do this without messing everything up. Let's see if that works. Okay. You have I a think cat? I do. She is currently yelling at me from the doorway right now. Oh, yeah. I hear the cat. Yeah. She's going to be doing that a lot. So I apologize. She's old. She's almost 21. Mm -hmm. And she's quite deaf. So oh, she doesn't understand. Oh, oh, my gosh. No, you're okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for being so patient. I'm so sorry for starting this late. Thank That's you okay. so much. Thank Life you. happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And hi, Mr. Is it a, is it a female cat or a male cat? Uh, she is female. Her name is Neko san uh, That is Miss Cat in Japanese. Cause... Miss Cat. Yeah. yeah I, I, I was 15 and I thought I was being very, cl very clever. So. Mm, yes. We love all mm -hmm. our pussies over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jayla, it is so nice to virtually meet you. And Hello. thank you so much for doing the chat with me because I didn't notice until you said yes that we've only had one Cycle 5 chat, which was from Lisa D'Amato. And I've tried to reach out to other girls and whatnot. And so 
First of all, thank you for agreeing to do this. I'm going to share with everyone that Ms. Jayla was kind of nervous, everybody, but I've spoken great of my <laughs> class. I said the students in my class are very nice people. I see them down here saying, oh, my God, yay, she's here. <laughs> she hasn't aged a bit. I've spoken very highly about you guys, so don't disappoint me as we get into the things of the things today about cycle five of America's Next Top Model. I know. Like I said, I don't know how much of this I'm going to remember. Like, people are always like, hey, remember that time you went and you did that thing? And I'm like, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how long ago was it for you? Um, casting started 16 years ago. Dang it. Yeah. God, so it. It I applied... Like I applied in January of 2005 and the last episode aired, I think it was December 7th of 2005. So it was like a year long thing that happened. It took up a whole year of my life. What made you audition for top model? So I watched season one. Mm -hmm. um, I used to always watch it at my aunt's house mm -hmm. and uh, my, my actual biological aunt and my adoptive aunt lived together. Mm -hmm. I, they lived together at the time. And I was obsessed with season one. Like, I loved mm -hmm. it so much. Mm -hmm. And so my adopted aunt, my Aunt Judy, who might come up again, um, she was like, you should definitely apply for the show. She was like, you're not getting any younger. Like, as soon as you turn 18, I think I was, I think it was 16 or, no, I was, yeah, it was either 16 or 17 when, like, the show uh, first came out. She was like, when you turn 18, she was like, you need to go and you need to apply. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. And then, like, um, I don't think I, I watched cycle two. I might've watched cycle three, but I, I picked it back up again, like cycle four. And she like saw me watching it again. And um, I think afterwards it was like, if you, you know, want to be on America's Next Top Model, you should apply. Mm -hmm. And here's how to do it. Go to this website. She literally walked up to me one day. It was a 17 page application. She walked up to me one day and she just handed it to me. And she was like, we're going to do this now. Cause you're not getting any younger and this needs to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so she like my aunt Judy is like, the number one reason why I was on the show. Hey, Aunt Judy, we thank you, girl. Thank yeah. you. She shot my video and everything. She, she paid for the postage, put it in the mail, mm -hmm. and sent it off. Um, I got called for the, um, the cattle call up in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. She was seven months pregnant, drove me up there, hung out with me all day long, all day long, and uh, then drove me back to, to Tucson afterwards. Shout out to Aunt Judy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. That is real love. Yeah. She, so, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no. I, I worked for her and her husband at the time, too. So when it was, it was you know, time for me to go, they mm -hmm. were like, you know, don't worry. Your job's still going to be here when you come back. Oh, like, great. Go, have a great time. We love you. We wish mm -hmm. you the best. You better win. <laughs> so, like, how was it? I asked everybody this. How was it? You said you were a fan of the show. You have watched the show. So how mm -hmm. do you feel going from a viewer to now a contestant and you walk, you get off the plane, you see all the things, the producers, <laughs> the bands, the girls. How was that for you? It was it was way different. Like I was I was homeschooled, so uh, mm. all my friends were were older. Mm -hmm. I I was not used to hanging out with people my age. It was very different that first of all um you actually kind of get used to the cameras like pretty pretty early on they they straight up tell you in the beginning like do not talk to the camera people don't talk to mm -hmm. the sound people like they're they're there to do a job you're here to um you know you're here to to be a contestant like you know you can be friendly with them like you can say hi good morning whatever mm -hmm. but as soon as they pick that camera up or they pick up that boom mic like they are gone they disappear Mm. Um, but it, I think the main thing was just the stress of every single day. You had no idea what you were doing. Oh, I bet. Like every single day it was like, get up, get in a car, wait around for like five hours and then go do something. Yeah. So. <laughs> How was it when you walked into the panel and you saw Tyra and the Jays? Um, I was extremely nervous. Mm -hmm. I was extremely I nervous. Um, I was just like, I mean, I was like, this is the moment. This, this is the moment when, like, I, I have to sell myself. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what was going to happen. And I was just like, I'm, I, I mean, I think that's how I made it through casting. It's just like, I just answered every single question they threw at me. Mm -hmm. I answered it honestly. Um, I think my big thing, though, was like, oh, they were like, this chick's a Jehovah's Witness. We never had one of these before. Mm -hmm. And they tried to make it a storyline, but, like, mm -hmm. nothing happened with it. I remember there was one episode where... Um, 
I think like the, the preview for like the next episode, they were like, mm-hmm. and Jada strays further from her religious background. <laughs> and I was like, good luck with that. I'm like, I literally walked <laughs> in to uh-huh. casting. And I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah I was raised to have witness, but like, I can't really call myself one. And I mm-hmm. literally like listed all of my sins. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they were like, but are you going back? And I was like, I mean, yeah, probably. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> There were a lot of questions down in the comment section asking you about, I was going to ask you, but I'm glad you um, brought it up because it's a perfect segue. A lot of people asking you, are you still Jehovah's Witness? And how did you feel um, about being portrayed as a Jehovah's Witness that wasn't really Jehovah's Witness on the show? And did you experience any backlash when you got home? Oh, I did. Um, Actually, my mom's parents disowned her for a while. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I made a plan. I knew as soon as I said that I wasn't a virgin on national television, that I was going to get kicked out of my house. Um, like my parents weren't even going like to church at the time. I just think that it was more like they figured it was going to embarrass their family. Um, so I, I just, I knew like, like one of the things that my parents told me, they were like, you are not allowed to have sex while you live under our roof. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to get a tattoo. You were not allowed to get a piercing. Um, so wow. Uh, I had lots of piercings, lots of piercings. I would literally sit in my car when I came home from work and I would take everything out of my face. Um, and, uh, but I, I didn't have any tattoos and I didn't lose my virginity until I was like 19, but I moved out when I was 20. So I mm-hmm. moved out after the show, um, had filmed. It was right before the first episode aired. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I guess there was a preview of like my casting that came out on the internet. Mm-hmm. and my my maternal grandparents saw it and they were furious and they emailed my mom and they were like we we expected you to raise your children better than this and they, they didn't emailed talk. they emailed your mother mm-hmm. oh, didn't wow. even call her they emailed her and they were like we expected you to raise your children better than this she's an embarrassment to the family you need to you need to get your life basically you need to get your life together um and they didn't talk to her for uh, I want to say it was around a year. I can't remember if it was over oh, a year or if it was less than a year, but yeah, it was like a year. So Ooh, I'm sorry to hear that. Has it been reconciled since then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my grandmother recently passed away, but um, like, I, I know that they, it, like I said, it was, it was only like a year and then gotcha. everything was fine. So. so I'm curious to know, how do you view religion in relation to like what you did and how you were portrayed on the show like what's your rationale and breakdown of it like i like i said i think that they the one of the reasons that they picked me was you know you you have to remember it's a reality tv show mm-hmm. it is so um you, you have to remember that they're they're picking people for a reason they're they're mm-hmm. trying they're trying to make stories they're trying to create storylines what mm-hmm, people don't mm-hmm. understand is they're they're are actual writers that work for the show and their job is to watch every single you know second of footage Mm -hmm. and then put it together to make Mm -hmm. a story Mm -hmm. because they are trying to give you like arcs and stuff like that as well Mm -hmm. um so i think that that's that's one of the reasons they picked me they were like we're gonna we're gonna turn this into a thing Mm -hmm. and then i just didn't give them anything (laughs) yikes so i was like you just got to go off of me and then of course Mm -hmm. there was tons of drama so i was like here you go you're welcome. <laughs> Cycle 5 has a bunch of drama. Cycle 5 has so much drama. When mm-hmm. I was going through the questions today, I was like, that did happen. That did happen. That mm-hmm. did happen. Okay, so, I mean, we're going to get into it. And I would love to hear your perspective, any behind-the-scenes tea that you had that can oh, yeah. clarify a tons. bunch of things. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, ooh, this is what we like to hear. Let's just get into it. I want to open it up by doing Top Model Roll Call, which is basically where I say every name of every girl who was casted on your cycle, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your brain, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Are you okay. ready? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so the first person is Ashley Black. Poor Ashley. She didn't even make it. <sighs> she tried. She really <laughs> tried. But there was, there was, there was lots of... Uh, Tyra did not like her. Tyra did not like her. Really? Like, yeah. So, oh, okay. Oh, so you don't know that story, I'm guessing. So, okay. So it was, it was the last day of casting, right? This was like, they were picking like the final, I don't, how many of us were there? 13, 14? I don't even remember. I think 13. Um, 
So yeah, they were picking like the, 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 the ones that were going to go into the house. I think we were down to 20 and seven were going to get eliminated or six of us, however many. And then we were, that, that was it. That was final casting. So mm -hmm. we got to go into, um, I think Lisa talked about hers, where you got to go in and you got to talk to Tyra, mm -hmm. you got to ask her one question. Or mm -hmm. she, didn't, she didn't even, I didn't get a question. I think she asked me a question. But anyway, so Ashley goes into mm -hmm. hers and Tyra was like, why do you want to be a model? And Ashley was like, well, you know, I just remember that Pepsi commercial from like the 90s with like the supermodels in it. She was like, mm -hmm. oh. she was like, there was three supermodels in it. She was like, it was Cindy Crawford. It was, um, and I don't remember if this is, if, if this, if this is right or not. It was like Claudia Schiffer or like one of the other like big ones. She was like, and there was a third one. She was like, and I can't remember who it is. Oh, who was that other model? She was like, anyway, doesn't matter. But like, I saw that Pepsi commercial and like, that was it. Mm -hmm. And Tyra looks at Ashley and goes, that third model was me. Oh! Oh, you were done. You're oh, done, yeah. girl. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if this made it into. I think it did make it. It did. It did. It did make it into the episode. Mm -hmm. So when Ashley gets eliminated, Tyra looks at her and says, First impressions are everything. Oh, my God. So I'm pretty sure that made it into the episode. So, yeah. <laughs> so poor Ashley no, did not have a chance. <laughs> she did not have a chance. Mm hmm. Yeah, so there's your there's your first little behind the scenes scoop. <laughs> mm -hmm. But while she was there, what was your experience of her? Oh my god, I, she was one of the loud ones. Like mm -hmm. I I'm I'm a very introverted person. I'm extremely shy. I mm -hmm. am not good in groups. I do not good in groups. I sit in the corner. I keep my mouth shut. Um, the only reason why I even said anything, I think the majority of casting is because like the, the, the head of casting, her name was Michelle Mock. I don't think she was related to Ken Mock, mm -mm, but not. yeah. So Michelle Mock walked into um, the room where we were all at, at the, the Hilton hotel. And she was like, you guys are giving us nothing. You guys are like the most boring bunch of people. I've <laughs> something along those lines. It, did, it wasn't verbatim, but she was like, you guys are like the most, boring group of people we have and unless you guys start giving us something and like showing us who you really are we will 100 percent go back out and get a new group of people don't oh, think no. that just because you're here that you're gonna make it she's like we've done it before we've gone out and got more people so i it was like it was literally like a, a switch just flipped in my head i was like i just gotta start saying stuff and that's why the dumbest stuff used to come out of my mouth Mm -hmm. I was I was just like, I got to say something. Otherwise, I'm just going to fade into this wall right here and disappear. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I said a lot of dumb stuff. Put my foot in my mouth a lot because I was like, I just, I have to say something. Otherwise, they're going to be something. like, get out of here. You're boring. Get out of here. So. Oh, my goodness. This has opened up already. <laughs> Jayla, you have 230 people watching you in counting. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> The next girl on the list is Ebony, who I love. Ebony, oh my, she was one of the loud ones. She was so loud. And she, it just, oh my, oh, that's right. During casting, I told her um, I would punch her in the face. Because it, it was, it, if some girl was like, she was like, if you could punch anyone in this room, who would you punch? And I, mm -hmm. I pointed at Ebony. I was like, I would punch you in the face just because you're so loud. Like, I just, I, I just need, like, like, like Bree said, I just need five minutes, just five <laughs> minutes without uh -huh. your mouth. So yeah, she was extremely loud. I mean, she was just living her life, but I was just like, yeah, a lot of people just make me, make me uncomfortable. So, because mm, I, I think, it, I think it just shows me like how quiet I am. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. I should probably say something, but yeah. Sack them in the mouth. Not, not no. <laughs> you know when i did my recent like scour of all of the cycle five girls in their instagrams ebony is married to a parisian man and lives in paris with like i think she has i know it's at least two kids but i think it's, i think she has three maybe four maybe maybe wow she, she lives in france right now yeah i i think i went to her instagram probably like within the last three months and i was like mm -hmm. wow looks like she's doing it i think it was private though so mm -hmm. I couldn't like really see anything, but I just kind of like looked at like her, um, her, her about info. And I was like, good for her. 
Mm -hmm. I, That's well, she, she clearly just made it public recently because I was able to like go and I'm like, girl, she's living a whole, a whole different life in a whole other place. I'm good curious. for her. I'll be interested to know like what led to that, you know? Um, I know right after the show, she was running around with um, uh, one of the stylists that used to style us for, um, I think it was like our very first shoot. Like she befriended him. I don't know. I don't think they knew each other prior to the show, but because she lived in LA, she, she like networked. She mm. was like, every, like there was a lot of people that would like give us like business cards and stuff like that. She actually held on to them and like networked. She was mm. smart. She was real smart. That makes sense. From the show, she seemed very determined and like eager to get out there. So that makes sense mm -hmm. here and there. Yeah. The I next never, person. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say. I think it was really unfair what happened to her on her on her shoot too. Like when they were like, "Throw your braids, throw your braids." They just kept telling her to like whip her hair, and so that's like the photo you got. She's just like it was like her hair in her face because like that's what they made her do. Now, I've never had braids in my head. I've had, like, a, a lace front wig with dreads, mm -hmm. which, I mean, they were slightly... Throwing braids... Braids are heavy. Oh, yeah. Hers were long, too. They were, like, down to her butt. Yes, they, they are heavy. They didn't even finish her hair in time for the makeover shoot. There was, like, really? still a spot right here that they still hadn't done. And, like, literally, like, I think it was, like, two ladies came to, like, our house the next day and finished her hair. Oh, wow. Yeah, her, they worked on her hair for eight hours, braiding those, those little tiny braids in, and they still didn't finish in time. Yikes. Yeah, the, those braids take a long time. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know, Jaylee, you know I know, you know, I, the girls in my family, they go get their hair done. When they get braids like that, they go to a bitch house, and they sit there all day. They don't mm -hmm. do nothing. They go there at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. They not leave until 8 o'clock at night. And they, yeah. they, yeah, they're there all day. Yep. Yikes. Okay. The next person on the list is the iconic Cassandra. <laughs> um I didn't I didn't really get to know Cassandra because like mm -hmm. she was she was pretty quiet too. Like I, I I mean she definitely stood up for herself like here and there. I mean obviously like the way she left, she she was sticking up for herself. But she pretty much kept to herself. Like mm -hmm. she seemed like she was pretty uncomfortable um uh, like the time that she was there. I think it was because, um, you know, like, I think she kind of expected what she was going into to be more like her pageantry. And she just wasn't expecting everybody to just be like, doing whatever the whatever the fuck they wanted. Like she, mm -hmm. she I think she kind of expected like, like us to be a little bit more like poised and quiet and like, mm. proper and stuff. And that that was that that doesn't make a TV. That's, no. that's not the kind of people they're looking for. So she just At seemed all. like, she was just like, how, how the hell did I get myself into this? So. I want to know, was her breakdown regarding her hair as bad in real life as it was portrayed on TV? Because it seemed like Mama was going through about them cutting her hair. She was not happy. I mean, I was in another part of the salon. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and this is another little bit of drama that was behind the scenes. So I got those long extensions, right? Mm -hmm. My hair was like, probably down to like my hips or something. And uh, I mean, I didn't know this at the time because I don't think I had had extensions before. I didn't under, I didn't realize like how, like how tangled they get. Like my hair's super long now. It's probably mm -hmm. the same length as my hair was on the show. And if you don't put your hair up before you go to bed or you're just like running around, like it starts to tangle up real bad. Mm -hmm. So I was constantly walking around with this hairbrush that they gave me just brushing my hair. And everyone was like, why are you doing that in front of Cassandra? <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh, and they were like, why are you doing that in front of Cassandra? You're like rubbing it in. And I was mm -hmm. like, I didn't even think about that. I'm like, I'm just trying to get the damn knots out of my hair. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was constantly just sitting there like having conversations, just like brushing my hair. Just like, yeah, girl. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing tomorrow? Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, Shout um, out to Cassandra. Were you shocked when she left? When she was like, yeah, I'm gone. I, I mean, yeah, I was shocked that she left, but I wasn't shocked at the reason that she left. Like mm -hmm. I was, I was sitting in the chair, like they were trying to get my extensions out and they were the, like the little ones with like the beads. So, Ooh. and they, and they didn't know how to get them out. Like there was, um, what was his name? Um, oh, what was the name of the stylist who cut my hair? And, it was something. Anything fans out there help us. What was it, the name of the stylist who cut It was, it hair? was like, it wasn't Christian. It was, he was, um. 
God, where was he from? It was either from like France or Italy or something like that. So it was like, mm -hmm. it was like Christopher or like Christian, but like Christopher or something like that. <laughs> Christian Mark? Cristiano? I think it was Cristiano. Mark, Mark right? Mark? Mark? Christian Mark? Maybe. Maybe. I used to, I used to know his name, but like I was sitting Christoph. there. Christoph. They're saying Christian. I'm looking. Come on, guys. Help us out. Somebody says no, Rob Calty. No, no, it was not. It was not Rob. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, so he like his his uh, his assistant was trying to get um Christian Mark. I mean, you could be right. Mm -hmm. that, that Christian Mark. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. Christian Mark. Um. So he, like his assistant was like trying to get like the little beads out of my hair, and all she was doing mm -hmm. was like pulling my hair. So I was literally sitting there with a pair of needle nose pliers, just like crushing the beads myself and like pulling them out of my hair because oh. all she was doing was just pulling my hair. So that I, all this was going on in the other room, like while I was getting these like um, extensions out. And then um, I think someone said something like, Cassandra's leaving. And I was like, what? And then I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I like got my head pulled back and I was like, mm -hmm. what's going on? And like somebody came up to me and was like, Cassandra left. And I was like, oh man. I'm like, would she just like go back to the house? Like, is she not mm -hmm. feeling well? And they were like, no, oh like, we're pretty sure she left the competition. Mm -hmm. And then um, Jay Manuel came in and just like, I th he was doing it for TV. It was, it was, it was a pretty much a dick move. He came in and he was like, uh, he was like, so Cassandra just left because she didn't want to change her hair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, yeah, so uh, how do you feel? He was like, you're getting a dramatic makeover. You know, you're going from hair down to your waist to hair up to here. He's like, how do you feel about it? And I was like, well, I'm like, my hair has been really short before. My hair has been really long before. I was like, my hair was medium length when I got here. I was like, I mean, it's a drastic change going from hair down to my waist to like hair up to my cheekbones. I'm like, but I'm like, I've done it before. It's nothing new to me. I'm like, it's just going to take me a couple minutes to get used to. And he was like, that's the, that's the appropriate response. And I was Ooh. like, Okay. All righty then. <laughs> we love Jay Manuel. Okay. Sarah. Sarah. Poor little Sarah. I said the same thing. I just want to say it out loud. But since you said it, I'm going to say it too. Poor Sarah. Poor little Poor Sarah. Sarah. She was she was so uncomfortable. She was just like somebody really? that was just like, she was so awkward in her skin. Like, I mean, obviously I haven't seen her or heard from her in well over a decade, but she was just she was another person that was just really shy, but like you could, you could see it in her body language, like 24 seven. So, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why like she gravitated to Kim so much mm -hmm. is because like Kim was like such a, a confident and outspoken person that I think that she, and then of course, you know, Kim had a crush on her. So it, I think it was just real easy for her to be like, I'm oh, cool. Cool. I'm going to hang mm -hmm. out with you because you got my back and we're mm -hmm. good. Okay. Now I have a question since you brought about since you brought up her and and her and Kim. Mm -hmm. Jayla, you have 250, 250 people watching you by the way. The people are commenting <laughs> down there. They're excited about it. Yay guys. Yay. Yay. Okay, so I'm I am not gonna give this tea up. And Miss Lisa D'Amato, the last time I talked to her kind of spilt it when she <laughs> Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Where she was like, Nick was a lesbian. And everyone was like, Whoa, wait. Were there any other instances you care to share about any potential scissor sistering that was going on in the house, top model, cycle five? Um, I made some promises to people Ooh, yes! that I fully intend on keeping. And so I, I, I told certain people, I was like, if you don't want this talked about, I will never talk about it. And I've kept my word. I, I hope I've kept my word to this day. So, no, you, you're doing it right now. We love integrity. I just had to ask the question. I wouldn't be yeah. doing my job if I didn't. I know. Oh, okay. So, is, is that is that all on 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 Sarah? All on Sarah. Yes, for now. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be something that comes up later. Okay. The next person is Diane. Poor Diane. Who I wanted to see go further. She was so beautiful. I know. Um. Diane, her and I, I don't think we got along very well. Mm -hmm. I know that her and Nick were like BFFs. And I shared a room with the two of them at first. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I always felt like I was third wheeling in my own bedroom. <laughs> That's why I just slept a lot. I was just mm. like, okay, bye. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Diane, Corinne. Corinne. I really liked Corinne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she was, she was just like so genuine. Like she did not give a fuck if you liked her or not. She was mm -hmm. just somebody that was just totally authentically herself. I remember watching as a child Cycle 5, and I was kind of upset that she left. I was like, Corinne, I want her to stay. Yeah. I know. She was, a, I, I mean, we didn't always get along. I mean, I didn't always get along with everybody in the house. But, like, mm -hmm. I mean, she was just, like I said, she was just somebody that was just, like, so confident in herself. And she, like, mm -hmm. she just did not give a fuck. She was like, if you love me, great. If you hate me, bye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Kyle was, Kyle was sweet. Um. Yeah, she she's somebody that I don't think had like a malicious bone in her body. Mm -hmm. She was just like, I'm here for a modeling competition. I know I'm good looking. I've I've, I've been told I got a great walk. I'm just gonna do this and see how far I get. Mm -hmm. She she didn't. I don't think she intentionally like started anything with anybody ever. Okay. What about the next person on our list, Miss Lisa Diamato? Lisa and I had our ups and downs for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, I love Lisa. He, her and I are still friends. I think she's the last girl I've see, I saw in person. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about Kim? Kim, Kim and I, of course, also had our ups and downs. Kim was like somebody that like, she was funny, like, you know, but then there was times when she was just like intentionally mean and like, mm. it, it kind of sucked because like, there's definitely one time when she was sitting there and she was talking shit about Lisa. I think it was a plastic surgery shoot. Mm -hmm. And she just like sucked me into that. That, and um, I remember as soon as the words came out of my mouth, I was like, why did I say that? I'm like, I don't need to prove myself to this person. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be friends. She's going to be mad at me and, and against me tomorrow. Why did I say that? And sure enough, the next day. And she was somebody that like, she had like her little person in the house that she like stuck with. Mm -hmm. like first it was Sarah and then it was Nicole. Mm -hmm. So like, she always had like that, like, I don't know how to put it. Like she just had like that little like BFF that like always had her back no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like she could not like just be by herself and be, be by herself. Be yeah, alone. She, she needed her backup. Mm. What about Brie? Brie is my best friend. So that's what I have to say about her. <laughs> Brie and I were just like, uh, Brie was like the person that would come to me and be like, um, I think she came to me one time and she was like, all these bitches in this house have something to say about you, but you've never done me wrong. And um, as long as you don't fuck me over, I'm not going to talk about you behind your back. <laughs> Shout out to Brie. <laughs> yeah. She was just like, and she's like, she's so naturally beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. To this day, she is. Like, I mean, I, I just remember, like, looking at her and being like, you literally have, like, my favorite face. Mm -hmm. And then they would put makeup on her, and I'd be like, go away. <laughs> I can't handle this. She was so beautiful. She is so beautiful. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And her son. Her son is so cute. Yes. I've seen the pictures of him on her Instagram. Oh, yeah. He's going to mm -hmm. grow up to be, a, if he doesn't grow up to be a model, or, I mean, maybe he doesn't want to do that, but if he doesn't... He's just going to be professionally good looking, whether he decides to do something with that or not. <laughs> I love the same thing when Brie, when I was watching Brie, and something tells me that there is a better photo of her out of from that cover girl photo shoot. Something just tells me there's a better photo. Even though that photo wasn't bad, but something tells because Brie was so pretty. She was pretty. Like, she's she just pretty. She's, she's not smiling with her eyes in that photo. But here, here's the thing, though, is like they constantly got after her for only being 5'7". Oh. Yeah, I I don't I don't think that she was gonna win because she was short. Like I have my my theories on stuff, which we will so. get into a little bit later in class. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. The next person on our list is Nick Faith. Nick, I love Nick. Um, we we definitely had our our we had we got off to a real bad start, real mm -hmm. bad start. Um, and but then like we picked it up, uh, we got it together. Um, I remember. I didn't know when we like came to do like press for like the final episode who won everybody else knew, but me, I don't know mm -hmm. how that happened. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I watched the final episode, 
I literally like everybody was like con congratulating Nicole. I literally walked up to Nick with like tears streaming down my face, and I was like, I hugged her, and I was like, it should have been you. I think that's the uh, oh, oh oh, and then she looked at me and she nodded and she whispered, I know. Ooh, <laughs> you know, I mean, okay, let's just be real. Let's just be real. I thought it was going to be Nick. Like when it came down to. I, we to, all thought to it Nick was going to be Nick. I was like, good for you, girl. Good for you. You deserve it. You're gorgeous. You're, you've got everything. And then when I found out it was Nicole, I was like, but why? I mean, I mean, I, 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 we'll get into more of this later on in the chat, but I just think, you know, that year, mm -hmm. the type of winner they wanted may mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. already been decided. So it really mm -hmm. didn't matter what any of y'all mm -hmm. did. I, I agree with you on that. I 100% do. Oh, no. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I thought Nick was going to win, too. I felt like out of all of you guys, Nick consistently always performed very well and she had a very nice presence about her mm -hmm. um yeah but of course in binge watching it I can see where Nicole at least what I'm watching as Nicole being kind of helped through and given chances and oh you, you have know. no idea Ooh, well do you want to tell us something right now Miss Shayla so Nicole and I were like the only ones like <clears throat> uh, when we came back to do like all the press for the final episode and stuff, she like did not talk to me. Like every, everybody came back with like this attitude of like, you know what, what happened happened. And we're just, we're going to put that behind us. Like we're, we're back living our real lives now. And we like, we know, like we know that this was just a TV show, but Nicole came back and she was like, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. And I'm going to talk to you. And then she just kind of like treated all like the rest of us. And maybe this was just me because she wasn't talking to me. I literally talked to her one time in like a week's worth of press. One time she asked, I, she asked me a question about something. She might've just asked me what time it was. Do you know why she didn't talk to you? Um, I don't, I, I probably said something or maybe she just felt that she was superior to us or something. I have, I honestly have no idea. I came back and I was like, I was like, I'm going to be friendly with everybody. I'm going to be cool with everybody. And like I said, I feel like everyone else came back with that same attitude except for Nicole. Um, let me ask you this while filming cycle five, did you witness any moments where you felt like Nicole was getting preferential treatment? Oh yeah. She had a full on meltdown after the, the secret shoot. She had a full on meltdown. She went up to um, Anthony Dominici, one of the producers, and she was like, she was practically like scream crying at him. She was like, I am so sick and tired of you humiliating me. She's like, that's what you're doing. She was like, you're just humiliating us. She's like, and I can't take this anymore. And she like threatened to leave. Oh, oh my God. We, no. we 100 percent thought that we were going to have two girls who just like up and left because oh, Nicole, was, Nicole was carrying on like that. Oh yeah, she was like, she was like, if you keep doing this to me, I'm going to leave like Cassandra did. Or I, I, she might not have said like Cassandra did, but she was like, "I will leave. I will walk off the set and you will never see me again." And all of us were just like, calm down like what happened to you like what's the name of that guy he hosts that show um the one on mtv what is his name um shoot anyway so like okay like the the whole secret shoot it was the commercial it was the the photo shoot and then we had the interview and she walked out of that interview and she just had a meltdown and i'm like he was so nice he was so nice and so I don't know what happened to her that day, but she just, she was not having it. She was not having it. Mm -mm. She, she didn't, <clears throat> to that degree, it didn't happen again, but she definitely had a couple other mini meltdowns like later on. And I was just like, then leave. Then leave. Get that like, bread, get that, then I was leave. Like, if like, if you don't want to be here, then I'm like, leave. all the rest of us do. I'm like, I will crawl through shit again if that's what I have to do to be America's Next Top Model. Like you can, Go home. Ooh, okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you two more questions about Nicole, and I think I'm going to leave it alone. 
Did she okay. get? Did she or anyone else get preferential treatment at photo shoots? Like, did everyone get equal treatment at photo shoots? From what from I what remember, you, mm -hmm. yeah, except for the Bollywood shoot. I mean, which which we would get into. Hold, mm -hmm. hold on to it. Mm -hmm. We would get into it. And then my other question, you may or may not know the the answer to this, but Nicole kind of disappeared from Top Model after her cycle, where, you know, normally sometimes the winner comes back and they show up and do a guest appearance or they may walk mm -hmm. the final runway. Now, there are a lot of allegations out there in the ATM streets and land about why she didn't come back. Potentially, there was a rift between her and the show. Do you know anything about this? I don't, but I, I get it. I mean, I'm not surprised. I could 100% see that being a thing, but I mean, I don't know. I, like I said, I haven't, I have not seen her. I have not spoken to her since we all got on a plane and went back home after, after, um, after the, the whole like press thing was over after our cycle. Mm -hmm. I've never, never heard from her again. I've gone on her Instagram. I have DM'd her to potentially get her to come do a live. She hasn't read any of it, but I'm pretty sure she's seen my name pop up in her comments. Nicole, if you're watching this, we would love to get you down here into the classroom to talk about you on Top Model and all the things of the things of the things of the things. She's married with children. Mm -hmm. She looks nice. Mm -hmm. Good, for her. <laughs> Good for her. I mean, I just... Oh God, I'm going to get myself in trouble for saying this but no, like you're not you're she fine. just seemed like she came from like an affluent like white family and she just was like okay now i'm a top model so i'm going to marry a, a um what is it a hedge fund manager and and you know have my house in the berkshires and bleh. that's just, that's just what she seemed like to me like she was just like okay i've made it it's time for me to be a trophy wife. Well. <laughs> and I think that's what she did. <laughs> so. I like her. You my type of girl. I like you, Jayla. <laughs> okay. What about Jay Manuel? He was such an asshole. <laughs> he was such a dick. Oh, man. He, like, had his girls that he liked. Like, I think he liked Nick. He liked Nicole. What size dick was he? Was he, like, a 2-inch, 3-inch, 10-inch, 5-inch girth? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean he's, he's a 2-inch dick because a big dick is good. So he was a little dick. <laughs> yes, man. Yeah, like, he, he, did, he, he did not like Brie. He picked on her all the time. He was such an asshole to her. He was an asshole to me a couple times, and, like, it was just like ridiculous. There was one time he came up to me. I was, it, we were in London. I was sitting on the floor because there were no chairs in the place. Like this is pertinent to the story. There were no chairs in this place. I was literally sitting on the floor. I think I was like eating a snack or something like that. Or I was just like hanging out minding my own business. And he walked up to me and he was like, you need to start practicing for your shoot. Like you should definitely be thinking about posing right now. And I was like, okay. He was like, you need to get in a chair because it was the Whistler's mother shoot. So I was going to be sitting down. He was like, you need to get in a chair and you need to practice your poses right now. And I literally like looked around, literally no chairs. And I was like, okay. I was like, I'm, I'm just hanging out right now, but I'll, I remember I'll do that. This. I remember this. You were like, okay. I was like, I'll do that. And he was like, right now. And I was like, I'll do it in a minute. I was like, I'm just, I'm hanging out right now. And he was like, well, you should definitely do it. And I was like. So he would just like do like shitty stuff like that to you all the time. I'm like, I don't know if like he was being told to do this stuff. But like one time Brie was like sitting there and oh, it was the same. It was the same day. Brie was sitting there and she was just minding her own business. And he looked at her and he was like, oh, you got Dunlap syndrome. And she was like, what's that? He was like, it's where your stomach Dunlap over your pants. You might want to do something about that. <laughs> oh my god he just like walked up out of nowhere and just body shamed her and she was just like mortified i mean she was furious but she was just mortified it was just like like Maybe i don't know he was joking I don't know. oh no he said it in like the most malicious way like he was like i said he just like there was just some of us that he just did not like and i think i think it was might have been that same freaking day um, or it was the next shoot, he was, I think he was literally sitting there with Nick and Nicole, and he was talking shit about Brie behind her back. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. What about Miss Jay Alexander? See, I thought Jay was my friend. And then when, when she betrayed me, I was not happy. I was not happy. So it was after we got to London. Um, it was right after uh, Lisa got eliminated. Um, we were having a private conversation in a trailer. Sorry, my, my tripod is so messed up. Um, it's not oh, you're fine. On. Do what you got to do. It is not hanging on. Okay, we're all enjoying it. each other today. I know. I just don't want to like tell you and have them just be like all around. Oh, you're fine. And, and I think I just broke it. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna hold this. Let's. I'm just behind you from doing harm, girl. <laughs> um, no, but so okay, we were we were having a private conversation. It was me, I think it was Nick, and Kim. Okay, I don't remember who all was there, but I I know it was like three or four of us. We were just sitting, sitting in like a, an RV trailer, like on set. And Jay was like, I did not know how badly they treated you guys. You talking about Miss Jay? Miss Jay was like, I, I didn't, she's like, I used to just like do guest appearances. He's like, now that I'm a judge, I didn't realize like the hell that they put you guys through. Like, you know, d like, did you guys fly first class? And we were like, absolutely not. Like, no, we were back in coach. And he was like, that's ridiculous. He was like, the amount of money that, like, that they're making off you guys right now, they can at least afford to buy you uh, a first class ticket if you're flying 14 hours to do their show. And we mm -hmm. were like, eh, you know, we kind of don't really expect that. And then we started talking about Lisa. And Jay was like, I did not see that coming. And I was like, I, I definitely didn't see it coming. I'm like, Lisa was doing great. Um, and this is where uh, apparently I fucked up. I said, I can't believe that Lisa went home before me. Like she was doing so much better than me. Like that kind of just blew my mind. And Jay was like, yeah, I didn't see her going home early. And um, what did Tyra say to me when I got eliminated? Just the other day, you looked at these judges and said, you didn't know why you were even here still. So, like, we were literally having a conversation. We, like, turned our mic packs off. And we were peeking out the blinds of this trailer to, like, make sure that the sound guy hadn't caught on to us. Because, like, Jay wanted to have a private conversation and kind of, like, air some grievances and be like, I didn't understand this was happening and blah, 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 blah. And we were just, like, I just fell into a trap, I feel like. Like, I don't know if it was intentionally a trap, but I fell into mm -hmm. a trap. So. Dang it. <laughs> Do you know... Or let me ask you this. What is your understanding of the reason why Lisa Diamato got eliminated? Um, I mean, I, I agree with her. Like, she was just, she was too much. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't realize that so much stuff was going on behind the scenes. I didn't realize the producers were pulling her aside and, you know, getting in her face. I didn't know that her grandfather died and that she was just, like, trying to have a moment. Like, I didn't know about any of this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that um, like, I remember when she said something about, like, getting asked about her father. She was like, I know that that was to provoke me because my father did terrible things to me. Mm -hmm. um, and they know that. And I think that's why they keep asking me about my father is to try to throw me off my game. Like, mm -hmm. they try to do that to me because I know in, like, my, my remember that 17-page application, they, asked, they specifically ask you what your relationship with your parents is like. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into casting and stuff, they, they're recording you the whole time. They, they like ask you to go into detail about it. So I guarantee she like went into detail so that they could use that against her later. Cause they tried to use like my, my relationship with my dad against me. And I was just like, yeah, we don't get along. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, can you elaborate on that? And I was like, yeah, we just don't get along. We're just two completely different, you know, well, actually, I'm sorry. We are the exact same person. And so we just rub each other the wrong way. And they were like, well, what does that mean? I was like, well, you know, just lots of fights. I'm like, then how does that make you feel? I'm like, obviously not good. You know, it's hard living in the house with somebody that, you know, openly despises you. So, I mean, it's tough. And they were like trying to get tears out of me. They were trying to get tears out of me. And I think Lisa and I were both like, both like very like nonchalant. Just like, yeah, it sucks. Okay. Um, are you guys enjoying class today, Jayla? Are, are you doing okay over there? <laughs> I am. I've got my Red Bull. I'm, I'm ready for more. 
I'm ready for I'm going to let you know, everyone in the comments, they are loving you right now. I know, I know at the end of the day, I'm going to go back and rewatch this and be like, why did I say that? But, <laughs> but here we are. Here we are. And we're here going we on to are. the next person, which is Twiggy. What about Twiggy? Twiggy was, Twiggy was really sweet. Mm -hmm. Like she would go off on like these stories sometimes and like <laughs> everybody would just let her because mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to say no to Twiggy. Um, like one time I, I think I, I walked in and I was wearing a crop shirt and I had like this dangly like belly button ring with like a mm -hmm. fake diamond in it. Mm -hmm. She went off on this story about like how she was uh, at a photo shoot and they like put like a real diamond on her forehead or something like that. And she just like told this story about how like this little old lady kept following her around, like this little old lady with a purse. And um, she like tried to go to the bathroom and this little lady tried to follow her and she was like, oh, it's okay, I can, I can go to the bathroom my, on my own. And the lady was like, um, I'm, uh, I'm here to protect the, the diamonds that are on your body and there's a gun in my purse. So I'm here to make sure you don't try to steal things. Oh. So like, Tw Tw Twiggy goes off on the story, it take like five minutes. Cause she was like, you know, describing things and stuff. And literally everybody's just sitting there like listening to her and then Tyra went, Okay, then. So, back to judging. <laughs> oh, Tyra. <laughs> so, I mean, she was just a sweetheart that just, like, she was mm -hmm. so nice to everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, you could tell that, like, she was, like, she was there to be a mentor. She wasn't there to judge us, you know? I, that was, like, her least favorite thing. Everyone else was there to judge us, but she was just there to be, like, I'm going to help these young women on their way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a delight. <laughs> so, so, that, so you, 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 you told me that Twiggy said she had a diamond in her forehead. That means she did it before Uzi Burt did it. Because he just went viral a couple months ago for putting a diamond in his forehead. So you're telling me that Twiggy actually did it before he did. I'm, I'm, joking. I'm joking. I was going to say, I'm like, uh, cultures around the world have been doing things for centuries. <laughs> yeah, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> um, Nigel Parker. Everybody liked Nigel at first. Like, everybody. Even Kim had a crush on him. Like, we all were just like, Kim? Mm-hmm. Oh, Kim. Kim even Kim, <laughs> even Kim, Kim was like, <laughs> she was like, you know, not my type, obviously, but like, maybe. <laughs> so like, we all like, were like, totally into him at first. And then, um, like, probably like six to eight episodes later, we were all like, no. Why? No. I thought everybody loves Nigel. Who hates Nigel? Ooh. What did Nigel do? We just, we just were done. We were just like, done with him. We were just like, no, thank you, sir. We would, we would like to just continue living our lives now without listening to your voice, which we originally loved. Was it so, that he was too mean? He wasn't... Wait, say that again? I said, was it that he was mean? You guys didn't like his comments? He, he wasn't yeah. friendly? Yeah, I mean, he started off as, like, somebody that we were like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, Nigel, like, you know, we love him. We know him from mm -hmm. Cycles Past. And then it was just after a while, we were like, why are you just being rude for no reason? Mm, gotcha. So. And then, and then, last but not least, Tyra Bain. Everybody always asks me about Tyra. Everybody is oh. like, so, like, yeah. I'm like, I get it. They're like, what is your relationship with her like? And I'm like, what relationship? They're like, no, no, like, tell us, like, t like, give us like some some info, some background. And I was like, you literally know as much about her as I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I've literally talked to the woman off camera for one second. Like, that's it. Like, I don't know her at all. Was she friendly while filming Cycle 5 to you guys? Like, you, the, I guess, you know, the little bit that you did see of her, was she, you know, I don't know. Uh, not really. No. I mean, is she, and th this is the other thing, too, is, like, a lot of people are, like, really mad at me when I say, like, I don't know her and stuff. And, um, uh, I'm like, you have to understand, like, she had her talk show at the time. Mm -hmm. She was still modeling, and she had America's Next Top Model. Like, she mm -hmm. had a lot on her plate, and I mm -hmm. feel like she just did not have time sure. for us. We were, just, we were just like an afterthought in her life. Like, she was trying to get her, her media empire up and running, and we were just a means to an end. Yikes. And you know what? I feel like, hey, hey now listen. Now, I'm, I'm, about to, I'm about to give the kids some hard truths out here in this world. I don't know Tyra, so I'm not really talking about Tyra. I'm just, I'm being inspired by you girls' stories and you just saying that. Listen, there are people out here in this industry, because I've met them, 
who will charm, they will smile, they will key, they will laugh, they will do all the things necessary or that they deem necessary to get them where they need to go and potentially get out of you what they need. I will help them get there. If uh, People will do a whole lot better in this business, in this world, if they understand that. Sometimes people have those motivations. And if you realize that you just may be a means to an end, you will view someone totally different. Mm -hmm. You will unassign so much responsibilities from them that you mm -hmm. don't even have to take yourself through the heartache and turmoil. Well, I mean, that's the other thing, too, is, like, you have to remember that models, they're, we're a product, mm -hmm. you know? We, we have to sell ourselves. Like, that's literally our job is to, you know, be pretty and be good at what we're doing. And, you know, if, if we're pleasant to be around, you know, on set, that's a bonus. I know you're fine. Your you sound went out. Are you back? You're back. Hi, Renee! Yeah, sorry. Yeah, my phone is ringing. <laughs> no, you're okay. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing that, like, and, like, that's the other thing, too, is, like, we didn't understand at the time. We seriously thought that we signed up for, like, a mentorship. You know, we thought that no. we were there. We thought no. that we were, we thought that, like, you know, because no. I feel like Tyra had a lot more contact with, like, the girls in previous seasons. She really did. Like, um what was it she used to talk to like the last like three or four maybe even five girls she would like sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one and stuff did not do that our cycle did not do it like we were all waiting for it like when we got like to london we were all waiting for like our little sit down our little powwow with her and then it did not happen did everybody say did it ever happen <laughs> nope nope they were like she was like okay see you judging yeah, you know, and I've said this a bunch of times before. And uh, listen, hey, Tara had her own dreams, her own aspirations, her own job, her own career, her own check she got from payroll. Mm -hmm. It's just unfortunate. I feel like people wouldn't whoop Tara's ass so much out here in these streets if she did not present herself as someone who was there to be a mentorship, you know, a mentor to everyone. And, I, and I'm not I'm not saying she was a, or a was not. Clearly, there's been some disconnect because there's been a lot of people who filmed with her, who may know her, who say, you know, she may not be the friendliest. I feel like if Mama's unassigned some of that stuff from her as a responsibility, she wouldn't have to go through as much as she, go, mm -hmm. as she goes through out here, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we seriously thought that we were going to go there and she was going to, you know, work with us. Like, I, I've seen, like, in past seasons where she, like, tries to, like, show them how to walk and, you know. Um... Oh, so we did have, like, the one shoot that she did in the backyard of the house mm -hmm. where she was, like, helping us a little bit. But that's, like, literally all we got. Yeah, it was just the. Well, you have four fingers. Yeah. I was trying to do elegant hands and then just, like, this happened. So. And so, I... wait. Are you telling us that they didn't Photoshop. It wasn't a Photoshop mishap they had of you of you looking like you have four fingers. You just held your finger together and it looks like you have four fingers. I think so. I was just like doing this. Yeah, see, that looks like three fingers, right? You don't know how you just debunked a whole theory. I, <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I remember yes, when yes, people used to yes. always look at me and say, get that pinky up. And I'd be like, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I didn't know there was anything about my fingers being weird. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, people talk, you know, there's a lot of theories out here in Top Model. Now, I'm a Top Model fan, but I don't get deep, deep, deep into it. You know, like the Reddits and all that. That's too much time for me. Mm -hmm. I got other shit to do, like scratching my ass. I don't know. But in people talking about, you know, them messing with the photos and stuff like that, they always mention your photo that Tyra took and your hand is like this. And, they, and it appears as if you have four hands so people always identify that as messy photoshop but you're saying no they didn't touch it you were actually holding your fingers together yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess i have very strange hands i can i can <laughs> optical lose them away at will okay well we're going to get into some of the fan questions. Not a lot of them, but they're really juicy. So, I already get know. ready. Yeah. I already know. Yeah. Okay. Which Squirtle. one do you want to start with? <laughs> well, we're going to start with Squirtle 101. That's Squirtle 101. 
I wonder what that class looks like. <laughs> a lot of hydroplane, honey. They're saying her makeover. How long did it take for her to get that long hair put in and where you pissed to get it out? Um, that took, I think it was like four and a half hours to get put in. Oh, okay. Um, and then once I got on it, on the case, um, and with those, with those pliers, like I said, and started going at those beads, um, mm -hmm. I think it only took like 45 minutes to get out. Mm -hmm. And then like another, maybe 30 minutes to cut my hair. Oh, okay. So I think like grand total of my makeover probably took around six hours. Gotcha. Oh, and then this is the other thing. They thought that I was a natural brunette. So, yeah, when I got to London, they were like, um, what is this? And I was like, oh, I'm a blonde. Like, they didn't, they like saw my roots and they were oh, this like, is, this what? is news to me too. I thought you were a natural brunette too. Mm -hmm. This, nope. this, this isn't your hair, no, your natural hair color. No, this is black. I would I love to see you blonde. I, there's some on my Instagram, I think. I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's, there's definitely like some throwbacks of me as like a little kid with like dark blonde hair. That's like my natural hair color. I think, I think, I haven't seen my natural hair color since I was 12. I'm so like interested now. <gasps> <gasps> yeah. This is a whole different person. Mm -hmm. That's not even my natural hair color. Like, that's, that's a little bit lighter. A than little my natural bit hair lighter. Color. Yeah. Yeah. That's not it either. Mm -mm. Okay, now, God damn it, Jayla. No, you got to go back to like when I was little. Little, little. But even to see you in, in another hair color than dark, like, 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 some, like it's, it's, why don't you like the blonde? Um, the only reason why I like, I've changed my hair color. I think it was like six or seven or eight times within mm -hmm. a span of like four years. I was like mm -hmm. multiple shades of purple, pink, green, yellow. Um, just like my hair was just, it was so fried. It was so fried. Gotcha. It was just like straw. And so I was like, you know what? I just got to go back to dark because gotcha. it's just, it, it doesn't strip my hair. So I was like, my hair's a little bit healthier now. So. Gotcha. Okay. So Tabrisha Terry is asking, why was she talking about you so rude towards Nick when she was the one who stole Nick's secret? Oh, I knew this was coming. <laughs> okay. Are you ready for the full story? I am ready for the, hold on. Let me, let me take my shoe off and get really comfortable. I don't think I've told the full story before. I don't. Are we getting an exclusive? Yeah, I mean, if it is, it's lost in like the annals of the internet. Um, it is now found. So what happened was, the day comes, we're all like reading through our lines, like memorizing them, and like we're all sitting around, like, okay, wh what's our secret going to be? And so I was literally sitting in my corner, minding my own business, and I was like thinking and thinking and thinking. I was like, what's my what's my secret going to be? And I was like, okay, I'm just going to say I'm afraid of the dark. It's true. Like, I've, I've watched horror movies from a very young age, and I was always worried about, you know, monsters in my hallway, people underneath my bed, aliens coming down from the sky and abducting oh, me. Should. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just, you know, I was just scared of things that kids were scared of, and I still have, like, some irrational fear of the dark. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm literally just sitting there, and I'm like, what's my secret? I'm afraid of the dark. Mm -hmm. What's my secret? I'm afraid of the dark. What's my secret? And so like, and somebody walked up to me and I wish I could remember who it was. It, I think it was either Lisa or it was Kim. And they were like, oh, you and Nick have the same secret. And I was like, what? And they were like, you and Nick have the same secret. Like you should, you, you might want to talk about that. And I was like, why? And they were like, because I don't think we're allowed to have the same secret. And I'm like, okay. So like, I walk up to Nick and I'm like, what's going on? Or, or Nick walked up to me. I can't remember. And I was like, so what's up? And I think Nick was the one who was like, I, I really don't think we should have the same secret. And I was like, I, I don't see why we can't. Like, we're two different mm -hmm. people. We're allowed to be scared of the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, or why? have the same secret or whatever. And then Jay Manuel walked up and was like, what's yours? And I was like, mine's I'm afraid of the dark. And Nick was like, mine's I sleep with the nightlight. And he was like, so it's the same thing, but it's, it's, you know, you're saying it differently. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, he was like, don't worry about it. He was like, you know, she could deliver it one way and, and she could deliver it another way. He's like, that's th what the secret is. Doesn't matter. 
he was like, what matters is how you say it, how you act in the commercial. That's what matters. And I was like, okay, cool. So like we went back to like our, you know, living our lives. So then I think I was up first and I go through, I, I say my lines and then Jay walks up to me and goes, you sound really rehearsed. I want you to change your secret to something else. Like on the spot. He was like, you sound too rehearsed. He was like, think of something else. He was like, and back to one. And I'm like, literally no time at all. I'm just like, I'm like, as I'm saying like my lines, I'm like, what, what, okay, what's my secret? What's my secret? What's my secret? What's my secret? And I get to it. I'm like, I sleep with a nightlight. Literally said it as a question. And Cause it was literally the only other thing that was in my head. And he was like, yeah, that sounded terrible. Go back to your original secret. So I do my commercial, you know, whatever. Um, and this is the thing that if you actually really watch that episode, what I said in panel was a Franken bit. Do you know what a Franken bit is? No, ma'am. So a Franken bit is where they take um, like sound bites, which are like little, like, like when we're doing our, um, our interviews, mm -hmm. they ask us for sound bites, you know, they'll ask us a question. Oh, okay, and get it gotcha. Mm -hmm. So at some point they took me saying, I sleep with a nightlight and they cut that and they pasted it into my commercial and made it into a Franken bit where they take certain things that you say and splice them together. So if you watch that episode, when I'm standing there judging, I, you see me in the commercial, what's my secret? And then it, the, the camera cuts to me standing there watching myself. And then you, you will, if now that you, now that I've said it, you will 100% hear it in a completely different voice. I say, I sleep with a nightlight. So they Franken bitted that together. That is not what happened in judging. I did not go in there and say, you know, that, that was not my commercial. And so I didn't realize that I was being watched and that girls went back to Nick and told her because mm -hmm. like I said it in such a terrible way mm -hmm. that I knew for a fact that they were not going to use that. And if they did, I was going to call bullshit on them. Ooh. I was trying to find the commercial to pull it up so we can all watch it together. But guys, y'all gonna watch it after we do this live. Yeah. And so, we know Tom Model is famous for Frankenbit. Now that we know that word, y'all hashtag Frankenbit. We know because that's if mm -hmm. Tyra loves a nice Frankenbit. You would hear Tyra and hey, I'm like, girl, you was in your bed recording that. You said, yep. Yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. So then we get back to the house, and Nick's pissed off at me. Mm hmm. And. I was just like, I was just like so over it at that point. I was like, yeah, so I said it and I explained why I said it. And I even explained it to Tyra because she was like, oh, I heard there was a little, you know, something around your secret. So like you guys have the same secret. And I told her, I was like, yeah. I was like, what happened was Jay at the last second was like, change your secret. And I was like, it was literally the only thing that was in my head. I'm like, I could not think of something else. And Tyra was like, I 100% know what you're talking about. She was like, I was in a music video and we were doing a catwalk in the music video. And the director pulled one of the models aside and was like, I don't like what you're doing. Do this instead and told her to do like the cat motions because I think they had cat ears on. Mm -hmm. So we love they, a girl that has her feet. Go ahead and take <laughs> So then, um, so then, you know, T Tyra comes out first, you know, in the, on the catwalk in the, the, um, the music video. And she was trying to, like, think of things to do on the catwalk. And she immediately just went to that and did, like, what the director told the other model to do. And I think that's what they use in the music video. And she said the other model was so pissed at her that, like, Tyra stole her little, you know, kitty, kitty cat, whatever, mm -hmm. movement. Um, and I, I don't know who the other model was, but she just told me the story. I think she might have even said, like, what music video it was. And she was like, mm -hmm. I 100% get it. Mm -hmm. She's like, I understand that, you know, something else was in your head. And when you're put on the spot like that, you know, sometimes you just, you mess up. Just go with what you know. Yeah. What feels right in the moment. So, I mean, it was just, to me, like, the whole thing from beginning to end was just, like, this doesn't need to be a thing. Like, and so when it became a huge thing, I was just, yeah. I was, I was just like, why? Why? And I was just, I was so irritated and I was so frustrated. And like I said, Nick and I did not get off on the right foot. Like we, mm -hmm. sh the first thing that like I said to her was just apparently the completely wrong thing to ever say to, to her. Um, and she snapped at me and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, 
I'm, I'm just trying to get to know you. I'm, I'm just trying to be your friend. Mm -hmm. And so I think that just like from the beginning, she just thought that I was going to be a snake and that mm. I was going to be a dirtbag and I was going to be there for the drama. Mm -hmm. So I, I a hundred percent think that she thought that I did that on purpose. Gotcha. And so I, that's why I just like went into the confessional and I was like, I'm just so tired of this. I'm just so frustrated. I'm literally just oh, Jamie, trying. You went off. That confessional is iconic. I know. I know. You I was just like, I, I was just so pissed. Cause like, I just felt like I could not do anything right around her. Mm -hmm. Like she was, it, I just felt like she was constantly looking for reasons to hate me. Mm -hmm. And I was just so frustrated. I was so frustrated. I was like, and, and, and remember, we lived in the same room together. Mm -hmm. We slept right next to each other every day. We could not get away from each other if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I was just stuck with her 24 seven and I just felt like I was constantly walking on eggshells. She was always mad at me. And so I was just, I, I just snapped. I snapped and you, you all saw what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it is going what did you say? I, what was my my favorite part? Of, you was like, if something's gonna happen, something big is going to happen. <laughs> I don't even know what, what what did I mean by that. I, right, like there was some like impending doom that was. I, I I was I planning on like screaming at her. I mean, that's probably what I was. That, that's probably what I was thinking. I was like, I'm just gonna blow up at you and yell at you and put you in your place and whatever. I didn't do anything. I just but you guys grew past that and. Mm -hmm. When yeah. was the last time you spoke to Nick? Oh, I mean, it was years ago. I mean, she is like off and on social media. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like, I'll, I'll like, she'll like pop up in something and I'll like go and be like, hey, how are you? You know, what's going on? And she's like, oh, things are great. I think the last time I talked to her, it was right after like her second kid was born. Mm hmm. And she was just like, oh, things are great. You know, just, you know, living my life. You know, my baby, I just got had my second baby and, you know, life is good. And I was like, great, glad to hear it. Mm -hmm. and that was the last time I talked to her. Got oh you. my gosh, <laughs> my friend Paige right now. <laughs> what did Paige say? Paige is go going off. Like people are going off. They they're, they're like ready for the granola, and it's like Paige oh, is already yeah. on it. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. No, we're gonna slow boil this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Herney Ferrari is asking. I want to know about that moment when Tyra pranked the hell out of her and Nicole saying they did make it to London to finally reveal otherwise. How did she feel about it watching it today? And what happened right after that? Was Tyra keeping the same excitement or she went from bubbly to blank when the camera turned off? <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I was, I was devastated. I mean, I, we were like doubly shocked because nobody had ever been double eliminated before. And I, I, had well, really watched... cycle four, yes, yeah, someone got double eliminated. Really? Uh huh. T that that that's what you know. That we were running for you. She dubbed they, Tiffany and ooh, Lordy, I'm, Rebecca got double eliminated. I I did not remember that, and I watched <laughs> that cycle. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Huh. Oh, anyway, I I mean, we we were just like we couldn't believe it. We were like, I mean, I was just feeling all kinds of shame. You know, because I was like, we did so bad. And like, she could, she like stuck it to us first. Like, she made us go through it. She was just you like, You have to be on point. You have to be fierce. You have to be ready. And that's what, you know what? I and, read Tyra a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's actually one of my favorite, like, 15 seconds of her. I thought that whole build up was everything. And that's why, you girl, both you guys have to pack your bag. Because you're going to. Oh, okay. So here's what I remember. I remember looking around and going, but wait, who's going home for real? <laughs> <laughs> like, Nicole was like relieved. Brie ran over and practically tackled me. And I was like, but no, like, who's, like, which one of us is really going home? Is it me? Like, I just, <laughs> I, I was like, I, I was, I, I totally understood like the double elimination. I was like, okay, I get it. I was like, yeah, we both fucked up. You know, this really sucks. You know, <laughs> and I was like fighting back tears, you know, doing the thing. And then, yeah, she was like, um, she was like, we're all going to London. And I was like, cool, but like, no, really, who's going home? Mm -hmm. And like, she came over, she hugged all of us. And she was like, she like did her little thing. And then she just like walked off set. She was just like gone. She was like, okay, I'm going to bed. Screw you guys. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. So, so that was I
No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that that's what I remember of that. That's what you remember? Okay, so I think why you guys got saved was because Cassandra had went home 100%. earlier in 100%. the cycle. So I'm curious to know, dang it, but it's hard to say because you would have to consider Cassandra not going home. But let's just say, to make it easier, there wasn't a, a double say. Who do you think would have went home that day with you and Nicole being in the bottom? Oh, 100% me, because Nicole was the one that was going to win. Oh, damn it. Right. Yeah. It would have been me. It's so sad to say this, and I'm probably going to sound like a big bully, but watching Cycle 5, I used to love to see Nicole in distraught, because the way she could construe her face in such horror and disgust is great TV. I... Still to this day, watch the clips of you guys standing on top of the thing with the birds, and she's losing her complete mind. It is amazing to me. It's it's mm -hmm. funny. It it brings I, me joy. I mean, yeah. I mean, that was the thing. Like she was just <laughs> like that was one of the. I, I mean, I, that had to have been one of the times when she like had a meltdown afterwards. <laughs> she was just like she would just like start crying and be like, I, mm. I like go to like the whoever was on set, like the producer, the director, who was ever was there with us. She was a crybaby. She would go and she yeah, hundred percent. Mm -hmm. She if if we did something that she did not like, she made sure that everyone on set knew it. <sighs> I mean but I'm pretty obviously sure. none of us liked it either, but I mean we didn't go after the crew about it. Yeah. I but I'm pretty sure you were relieved that you didn't go home and that you had another chance to fight another day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I was like, I'm back in it. I, I'm, mm -hmm. like, I'm like, I have to try now. I have to try harder. I have to be better. I have to do better. Um, but, yeah. I mean, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. So, Squirtle 101 again is asking, Lisa said in an interview that the picture the paparazzi snapping her on the streets of London shown on TV was not the one shown at panel. Can you confirm or deny this? The one? I don't know which so one was it. This was, they, they, they wrote so many words to say, to say, you remember you guys' first photo shoot that you had when you got to London and you guys were in the photo booth, which is one of my favorite all-time top model shoots. I felt like all those photos were beautiful. I love the concept. Um, but mm -hmm. the person is saying that... I saw Lisa... that interview, sir. What? What's that? Mm-hmm. what I say? Oh, no, remind me. I, I talk a lot of shit. what I said? You said my photo was trash. Oh, yeah, I probably still feel safe that way. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, your photo was trash, Jayla, because you were looking down to the side, and I'm like, I want to see her eyes. Why is she, why is she, why is she, yes, I yes, yes. Every, I still everybody was like, your photo was trash. Everybody was like, when are you going to, when are you going to do it? And I was like, I don't know. I'm like, he hasn't asked me, and then I watched that interview, and I was like, oh, okay, he doesn't like me. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. The, no, you know, and first of all, let me say this. I will like to apologize because I don't want you or anyone to feel like I do not like them. Because that's the case. I don't I don't know any of you girls to say I don't <laughs> like you. Now if I say your photo is trash, now that's a whole separate thing, but that's a separate from you being like a good person. But yeah. That was one of my first questions I was actually supposed to ask you was why did you think I did not want to interview you? It's actually on my thing from Messiah mm -hmm. too. Why did you feel a couple of months ago Oliver would not want to do an interview? And it's because I thought your photo picture was trash. <laughs> yep. I was like, <laughs> okay. I was like, I was like, and I was like, I was totally fine with that. I was like, I get it. I was like, some people like me, some some people hate me, you know. I was like, it's and that's everybody's, you know, everyone's has can totally have their own opinion, their own prerogative. Like that doesn't bother mm -hmm. me. Um yeah, but like I saw that and I was like, oh, I don't think he likes me. That's probably why he hasn't no. asked me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, people also have to understand, which I don't want people. I don't, I'm not pompous enough for people like they should know. But girl, I was filming a reality TV show. So it was like whoever I can find. It was really whoever the fans were sending to me and I could just like mm -hmm. easily contact them. I was just getting it done. But now that I'm calmed down, I have time to like actually research and look and reach out and all the other stuff but no it wasn't I didn't like you oh my god I feel bad now 
<laughs> it's okay. Like I said, I mean, I, I did. I had some terrible photos. So, mm -hmm. but... And also, like, I'm I'm a really insecure and, like, paranoid person. So mm. it's really easy for me to think that everyone hates me because a lot of people tell me they do. Damn. <laughs> no. And see, I try to teach the people who subscribe to these ANTM Twist courses that I do is that when we talk about these things, we have to talk about them in context. We have to talk about it in the context that this happened 30 years ago. This is an edited one hour show with a mm -hmm. bunch of hours of hours of hours of footage down on the ground. And all of these girls, I'm pretty sure, hopefully have all grown from when they were a child on reality TV. So yeah, I would never hold anyone prisoner to those things. So, But I'm yeah. so sorry that you thought I did not like you. That makes me feel so bad. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We're here now. We've moved past it. Or I've moved Yay! past it. I'm sorry. Because it wasn't a thing for you. It was all in my head. I, I, I know that now. <laughs> Gross, I'm sorry, but you were gross. you were trying to ask me a question, and I totally cut yeah. you off. <laughs> and, uh, girl, you're fine. You're fine. I love those types of moments. That type of shit. Is, that type of stuff excites me, see, especially when someone see. You know what, Jayla? Now you know me. And you always gonna be cool because you know what? You know I, what I respect. Can I curse? I know I, I've been cursing, but can I curse? Curse? What I respect I have, is, I have when, been is when bitches step to me with full confidence and say what they got to say. I can't stand no one who comes in my presence who likes the confidence to say, because to me, I'm nobody. Because I'm definitely going to say what I, what I got to say without without pause. Girl, mm -hmm. but you are, if there's a burning building and if Jayla and Oliver are the same building, I'm going to make sure Jayla gets out because I respect you, <laughs> what you just did. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you got to pray to me, honey. But the question was, Mm -hmm. Lisa allegedly alleged that the photo of her they showed at panel inside of the booth was not the photo. Oh, okay, so it, I, I thought you meant the photos of us when we were walking up to the hotel. I thought that's what you were talking about at first. Oh, you know what? Maybe. Correct me. I may be understanding their question wrong. Because um, I know that... Okay, so what happened was... Like, I think it was before we left LA, we had like social media training or not social mm -hmm. media training, uh, media it was training. like paparazzi. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was like, don't eat, don't eat in front of people. And like, we didn't know, I mean, that people were like taking pictures of us on set the whole time. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it makes sense to me now because every single reality TV show has an on-set photographer. Yes. Um, I actually know the person that was the on-set photographer for the very first RuPaul's Drag Race, and I knew who went, who won way before everybody else because I got Ooh. them too. Mm -hmm. Isn't it I nice having friends like just friends about you? Be finding out all this stuff before everybody else finds out about it. Like I'll be knowing. Yeah. Who I'm I yeah, I had somebody that worked on that. I knew somebody that worked on set, and mm -hmm. I it took me a long time, but I got them to tell me. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they took a bunch of photos of us and we were like, you know, like throughout the season. And then they were mm -hmm. like, don't eat, don't eat in front of people. Mm -hmm. um, and we were like, cool, we are, have cameras on us 24-7. That's going to be impossible. Um, but, yeah, they just like showed us all these things. And then so what happened was we were on this stupid long bus ride around London. Like we hadn't even got to the hotel yet. They put us on a stupid bus and they drove us around London for like four hours and it was freezing cold. We couldn't put our jackets back on because of like continuity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and even like, even like Miss J was like, I'm over this. This is so stupid. Like we went around the same roundabout, like I swear like a dozen times. Oh, but I did see Prince Charles and Camilla next to us. Oh, dope. So, yeah, that was like the one fun thing that happened on the stupid tour. So what they were doing was, is like the whole reason we were on this stupid bus for four hours is because they were setting up the 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 paparazzi as we were walking up to the hotel oh and this is the other thing too somebody guessed who we were at customs really yeah so it, um brie and i went up to customs at the same time and we were standing next to each other and they were asking us you know what is your business here in london mm -hmm. and I, we said we said we worked for anisa productions and we were just there to do a tv show mm -hmm. and literally the custom agent like after she had stamped our passport she goes are you guys from America's Next Top Model? Like, are you the girls that are going to be on the show? And Brie literally grabbed my arm and, like, just pulled me away. Because uh -huh. I didn't know what to say. And I thought that, like, the agent was going to come after us because, like, I had never been out of the country before. I didn't know uh -huh. if, if you had to answer all the questions that the custom agents asked you. But she, like, she asked, oh, and then when we were on the bus, 
there was another like double decker bus that went by and all the people were on top. And one woman was like, Miss J, Miss J, Miss J. And like, so like Jay is like, you know, waving and like saying hi and people are taking pictures. And then one of the women was like, oh, are these the new contestants for America's Next Top Model? And pulled her camera. We had to hit the deck. We had to literally get on the, the floor because like the second we got to London, people were guessing who we were and why we were there. So when we're walking up to the hotel and all of a sudden these photographers are running at us, we thought, we thought the jig is up. Like everybody knows who we are and why we're here. The context. I love the context. The context. Oh yeah. We were freaking it. out. We were mm -hmm. freaking out. We thought like this was actual paparazzi and we had mm -hmm. been made. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I literally just put my jacket over my head. I had my jacket mm -hmm. over my head as I was walking up to the hotel. I was like, I was like, I'm not breaking that contract. I'm not paying nobody $5 million. I didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. So, and then I like look next to me and Brie is just walking and she's like got her head up and she's smiling. She's like, get your pictures, get your pictures guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'm done now. Have a good day. And just like walked into the hotel. I was like, uh -huh. oh, so I like took my jacket off and I was just like, kind of like pose a little bit. I was like, I guess if Brie's going down, I'll go down with her. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I thought it was those photos you were talking about. Maybe they may be talking about those, but I love the story that you, the stories you share with us to get to this point. I don't even think it matters at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I tend to be long winded, but I've, I've been told I'm a good storyteller. So if I get, if I get out there, just be, be, you can pull me back at any time. No, and you know what? I'm not. I'm going to let you keep going and keep going until you tell me you want to get pulled back. <laughs> okay. So, I'm trying so, to see. <laughs> trying to make sure. This is from Lisa Diamato herself, y'all. Lisa Diamato dropped her ass down. Oh, in no. Section and she has left. Oh, oh. Did, did you think a cycle five chat was going to go was going to take place and Lisa wasn't going to put her pinky toe in it? Oh no, I would have been actually offended if she didn't comment down in my in, in the I, comments. She, I just feel like she doesn't have as much free time as I have, so I thought she would just be busy doing something. Because like I, I'm like I'm I'm the most boring person ever. I just like sit around and pretty much watch TV all day. I feel like Lisa's got like a business to run. She's got a family. Lisa doesn't have time for nobody. She's out making millions, doing her thing. <laughs> well, Lisa wants to know and is saying, Jayla was the only one that finally told me the producers were telling her in her interviews that I was talking shit about all of them in mine. I never did. It'd be nice if she could confirm to your viewers that they do, in fact, do fact diction, do this behind the scenes to call the girls <sighs> to fight and hate each other. Not once did I ever talk shit about anyone behind their back. I have more character than that. So I think if I'm remembering correctly, I was led to believe that Lisa had commented on something that I thought that she didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So I wish I could remember what it was, but they were like, well, you know, everybody has something to say about this. We want to get your side on it. And I was like, mm -hmm. what? I w what was it? I wish I could remember what the specific instance was. But yeah, I mean, I think I might have even said even Lisa. And they were like, she definitely has an opinion on it. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird. Because I thought that her and I had talked about this and like, you know, whatever. So, I mean, yeah, I think that, like, it wasn't, like, directly, like, yeah, Lisa's talking shit about you. But it was definitely, like, yeah, Lisa definitely has something to say about this. When in actuality, you found out she did not. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, there was only, I think there was only two instances where I was basically led into a trap. And the second time, it was not tactful. Like, it was straight up, this woman was trying to get me to say something that did not happen. I literally got woken up out of my bed at 3 o'clock in the morning at my hotel, drugged down to a studio, and this woman that I have seen since casting, like, this was after the show was over, or no, 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 this was, this was around the time of the, the final runway, after we mm -hmm. had come back to London because of the terrorist attacks, we had to come back and film it in L.A., 
So um, I was I literally, I was woken up out of my bed at three o'clock in the morning, taken down to a studio. This woman I hadn't seen since casting was like, and again, I cannot remember what this thing was because all I remember is just fighting her. <clears throat> she was like, so you guys, you know, you, we went here, you did this, this thing. I, who were they trying to get me to talk shit about? And they were like, and then you said, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, no, I didn't. And they were like, yeah, so this happened and you and so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. So just put that into a soundbite for us. And I was like, that didn't happen though. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yes, it did. She was like, you went here, you did this, you did that, whatever. And I was like, that may seem like the way it came off, but that is not what happened. And that is not what I said. So I will not say that. And she was like, she like said, like, she asked me about something else. I was really pissed off at this point. And, um, and so then she asked me about something else and then she came back to it. She would not let it go. And I was like, no. And she was like, just give me this one sound bite. And I was like, no. And I just flat out refused. I was like, you're trying to get me to say something that's untrue and I will not say it. Mm -hmm. So she was trying to, she was trying to make it seem like I was fighting with somebody that I wasn't. Mm. so this might be the thing that lisa's talking about because lisa and i saw each other the next day because we were at the hotel mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. so that might that might actually be the thing so that might have that very well could have been something that they were trying bad they were trying to get me to say about lisa mm -hmm. yeah and i remember Ooh. i remember i remember um so you had to wear the same um, you have to wear the same shirt in all your interviews. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have that shirt anymore. So I knew I, I wore an almost identical shirt for that one particular time. Mm -hmm. um, so they could get that last like little sound bite out of me. Um, and so I looked for it. I looked for that, that, that blue shirt that was just a different shade of blue. And I never saw it. They never used anything from that day when they pulled me out of bed and tried to get me to talk shit. They did not use it because I did not give it to them. Ooh, yes, ma'am, Jayla. Well. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Squirt a one on one. It's saying, okay, no, you talked about this. You talked about the moment, you talked about earlier the moment with you and Jay, and Jay saying you were being disrespectful at the, um, at the Olay shoot, you kind of, you kind of already touched on mm -hmm. that. Oh yeah, 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 that's right. Cause um, then Tyra asked me in judging why I was being rude to him. And I was like, cause there were no chairs to sit upon. So you told her this? I, I, I don't remember if I said it, but I just mm -hmm. remember just being like, dude, in what world? And what am I mm -hmm. supposed to do? Like pantomime sitting on a chair right now? Cause there are none. Mm -hmm. Cause he was just like, you need to practice sitting on a chair. And I was like, I'm currently sitting. What more would you like me to do? Mm -hmm. And he was like, you need to go find a chair and you need to sit upon it. And I was like, there are no chairs, sir. <laughs> Before I get to the moment that everyone's been waiting for, I, I should have asked you about Janice Dickinson. How was Janice Dickinson when she came and shot you guys? I love Janice. She mm -hmm. was funny. She was so funny. Like, she would, like, yell at you, but, like, you knew that she wasn't serious. Mm hmm So she would, like, I remember she was, like, yelling at me. She kept telling me to arch my back, and she doesn't know that I have problems. So I couldn't really arch mm -hmm. back. And she was, like, straight up yelling at me. And she was, like, she was, like, if I have to tell you one more time, I'm going to come over there. She was, like, and you're not going to like it. And I was, like, I'm trying my hardest. But, like... I knew, I knew that she wasn't serious though. I think that she was just like, she's just like a very, um, she's just a very intense person. So I don't know if other girls had different that. situations with her, but mm -hmm. I mean, I was fine. The only time that I saw her be flat out rude was when um, she asked for a ginger ale and no one brought it to her. So she was looking yes. at pictures and she just flat out screamed. She was like, if I don't get a ginger ale in the next five minutes, somebody's gonna get it. And I was like, <laughs> So I just remember like a PA just taking off running and going to find a vending machine because yes. Janice needed her ginger ale. So. Okay, here we go. Where's my battery? Where's my... Here we go. The moment that everyone is waiting for. And I'm giving I know credit what to 
Rancid Thor from YouTube. Rancid Thor from YouTube wants to know, did she, Jayla, eat, breathe, granola bar? <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I'm sorry, Paige. I cannot read your text message right now because I have to answer this question. So remember, my friend Paige was the one that was talking about the granola earlier, and now she's uh -huh. texting me about it. Uh -huh. um, I did not. I do not like granola bars. I, I eat them when I am about to pass out from starvation. That is the only time I have ever eaten granola bars. I, I do not eat them of my own free will. And, and now it's time for story time. So here we go. Um, I don't know if I should take it back to LA or not. Take us where you want us to go. I will. We I, will, go I, will with you. I will take us back to LA. So when we first mm -hmm. got there, um, we were supposed to use our per diems to go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and everyone would say like one thing that they absolutely had to have. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, okay. I get it. Never mind. Um, <laughs> Hi, Paige. Uh, <laughs> Paige was just like, don't worry. It was just a picture of the dog. Um, so, um, uh, so we go to the grocery store. It's a really like fancy, it's like the fans. It's like not, it's not a whole foods, but it's like, it's like celebrity whole foods. Mm -hmm. Basically one of the directors was like, yeah, this is where the celebrity shop. So I thought it'd be cool mm -hmm. if you guys went there so that, you know, if you guys ran to a celebrity, it'd be cool. So I think I might've been one of the first people to go to the grocery store and we always like didn't have enough money for stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I remember it was this huge thing that like, we were like, wait, why are we paying for our own groceries? Like, I understand that, like, this is what the per diem is for. But, like, I mean, I know it was, like, Lisa was, like, I have bills to pay. She was, like, I can't just be here without any income. She was, like, I have to send this money home to my boyfriend so he can pay rent. So I think we worked it out that we would get, like, $200 for groceries. But the problem with the freaking groceries is that people would never bring us back what we wanted. Like, I remember I asked for laxatives. And everybody decided that I needed an intervention. <laughs> Shit so bad. <laughs> and they were like, I, I, they were like, um, you, you need to, you know, like, you need to understand, like, you're skinny enough and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I haven't pooped in six days. <laughs> <laughs> there are no doors on our bathrooms. And I'm very poop shy. So I just, I needed some help. I was like, I needed some help. That's why I asked for laxatives. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm about to die if I don't have a bowel movement sometime soon. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of like what was going on. Like it was really hard for us to get the stuff that we needed. Okay. So fast forward to London. Um, Lisa's the only one that's gone at this point. Um, okay. so there, it's down to the five of us. So we would write down the things that we needed and in London, they were buying our things for us. I think the only thing that they weren't buying for us was cigarettes. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that they expected us to pay for out of our per diem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we would, we would wake up in the morning, and there would, like, over um, on the mantle um, in the suite, over on the mantle was the things that we had asked for the day before. Somebody would go out and shop for us and bring it back and, you know, put it there for us where we could find it. Um, so what happened was somebody went out, they went shopping. Brie had asked for granola bars. And because Brie didn't pay for this or the, the PA, and I know exactly who it was that went out and did this, the PA that went out and got the groceries assumed that Brie didn't pay for it, I guess. So I don't know if she actually paid for it or if she just got it bought for her. So this PA took a couple of granola bars out because she thought that Lisa might like them. So when Lisa said in that interview that she took the granola bars, she was saying it to be, you know, Decisive. no, she was saying it to be, uh, to, what's, what's the word? Not scandalous. Pro provocative you know she was just like she's probably mm -hmm. like me she's so sick mm -hmm. and tired of getting asked about it she was probably just like yeah it was me mm -hmm. so it, it was literally not a single member of the cast it was a production assistant who took a couple of granola bars out um the eliminated girls were in a different part of the hotel brought them over to lisa and gave them to her 
So then Brie wakes up in the morning, sees that her box of granola <laughs> bars is open. Before this box even made it into our suite, it was open, granola bars were taken, and then the open box was placed on the mantle. So Brie wakes up and just thinks that somebody just helped themselves to her granola bars. And so she was, she was bad. She was like, and again, it goes back to LA. We were just, we were so sick and tired of not getting what we asked for that when we finally did, I mean, I can understand why she was so angry. She was just mm -hmm. like, I finally get my fucking granola bars and somebody if took two of them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this is something that Brie did on a, sem a semi-regular basis. Oh, this goes back to that, that prank that Lisa played on us too. Um, I was sleeping all the time. All mm -hmm. the time. I was constantly tired. Um, like I said, I have really bad anxiety and stuff. And it just, it freaking exhausts me. Like mm -hmm. I am tired all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was so stressed out during like the entire filming that I just, Absolutely. at any moment I had to sleep, I was asleep. So uh -huh. Brie would literally just jump on top of me in bed and she'd be like, hey, Jayla. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> so she, she literally, she jumped on top of me and she was like, Jayla, did you take my granola bars? And I was like, what? She was like, did you take my granola bars? And I was like, I don't even like granola. And she was like, okay, go back to sleep. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so I go back to sleep. <laughs> so if you, if you watch when, when mm -hmm. Brie went and got the Red Bulls and poured them down the sink and Kim caught her, she literally turns around and tackles Kim. You can literally uh -huh. see my feet in the cot that I was sleeping on. I was out. I had no idea any of this happened. You can literally just see my feet in the background as like Brie like pins Kim down. It's like, don't you tell mm -hmm. nobody. You keep oh, your mouth shit. shut. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. keep your mouth shut. No idea this happened. I wake up the next day, everybody's fighting and I'm like, what did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the hell happened in like the last 10 hours? I had no idea what was going on. I was, I literally was asleep for everything. <laughs> Including the prank that Lisa put on us, which is why it was so funny. Well, guys, mystery solved. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. I don't think that we knew. I don't think that she admitted it until after we came back for, um, after we came back to film the, the finale runway. Mm -hmm. Like after, I think she, uh, after, I, I think she kind of like, found out what happened and like what a big deal it was that's when the pa was like oh that was me <laughs> that was me and i was like what i was like it's been you this whole time and she was like yeah she was like i gave him to lisa <laughs> and of course lisa had no idea what was going on she was she was in another part of the hotel she didn't know what was what was happening but yeah oh, best life playing pranks on people <laughs> Well, that thank you, Jayla, so much for thank you on and behalf I, of everybody. I mean, I I hope that this is finally put to bed. I literally please asked don't nobody ask no more goddamn questions about no goddamn I, granola bars. At least once a month, at least once a month for like the last literally sixteen years. It's like admit it, you took the granola bars. It was you. You're like I only eat granola. I'm like, I do not eat granola. I hate it. I've, it's like, it, to me, it's like eating sand. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. So, on to the next question. This is from GM. They're asking, how does she feel about getting the Where's Waldo treatment at the Bollywood photo shoot that got her eliminated? Oh, and there's a little bit more to that, too. I don't know if this made it onto TV. Um... So not only was I not front and center like everybody else, I was off to the side. I wasn't wearing as bright of colors. I didn't have, you know, the big wavy, you know, fun hair like everybody else had. Um, also, Nigel's wife came up to me and said, you're not going to have a lot of movement. So just make sure that you're not getting in anybody's way. Just make sure that you pose within your space. So, when I get to, to, to panel, um, and I was, you know, I'm being questioned about my, my picture and why I'm, I'm not in it, and you can't see me and all that stuff. I literally am like, well, I was told 
not to take up space. You know, I was told that I needed to make sure that I didn't get in the way of the, the other models that were in the shoot. And uh, I think right before this, like right when Tyra Road was like, um, I would not have done that. She was like, I would have put my hands on everyone's face if this was your photo shoot and you should have used any amount of space that you needed because you clearly needed more space. I literally, looking at the judges, I literally look off to the side and I glare right at Nigel's wife. <laughs> And then I, I turn back and I glare at Nigel for a second and I look back at Tyra sweetly and I was like, I wish I would have done that. Sabotage. <laughs> Cause Nigel's Nigel's wife was on set. She would like get up and like powder his his you know, mm -hmm. his oily forehead. You know? <laughs> I'm dead serious. She, I think she was a makeup artist, or that's what, at least what she did for him, because she was on set every single day with him. You just keep it going. You just keep it going, Jalen. I love it. I love it. There may still be a little bit of no. animosity all these years later. Not just sure. Maybe. Just maybe. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. maybe. Is yeah, there any I, other I, tea I, ab What? Is, is there any other tea about your final who I was top model at that photo shoot? Because, okay, and I'll be very I, honest, and I think, mm -hmm. you know, you probably were not a lot of people's favorite. Not mine at mm -hmm. the time when I was watching it, but I was like, well, damn, how did y'all put this girl off to the side like this? And, she, and y'all, she has on this short blonde hair with dark styling. She's not in the middle. Like, that's not right. Why y'all always put Jayla to the side? Y'all put her eyes to the side. Y'all put her to the side. Everything is to the side. That's nice. I don't know. I don't know. And I, I just, I don't know if you can tell, but that final judging, I was, I was just done. Mm -hmm. I just felt so defeated. And um, I was literally told I had lost my spunk and that they could tell that like I was off that day and like I lost my spirit because like, I just felt like mm -hmm. the whole time I was there, I was constantly just arguing with them. And like, yeah. you know, standing up to them and pleading my case and saying, no, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. And they were just like, okay, all right, we'll give you another pass. Mm -hmm. And I just remember in that final judging, I was like, this is it. And I didn't fight them on anything. They were like, you know, you're small, you're out of the way, you're insignificant. Other than saying I was told not to, to get in everyone's way. Um, other than other than saying that and, and doing the the death glares, that was it. <laughs> Everything they said to me, I was like, I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm so sick and tired of fighting with you guys. I'm like, I was like, I'm just done. I mean, I was sad. I was sad that I that I left. Um, but I was I was definitely I was over it. I was ready. It was mm -hmm. my time. Dang it. Okay. Um, now my next question I have for you is, did you walk in the final runway back in LA after the whole bomb threat situation? Yep. Oh, cool. Yep. How was that? It was, it was okay. I mean, it was really fun because, um, I feel like that was like our first like mini reunion. I think only mm -hmm. three, three or four episodes had aired so far. So it was whoever hadn't been eliminated on the show yet. Cause so the show started airing in September, but we didn't film that until October. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So it was still up in the air who the winner was between Nick and Nicole all the way to October. So, because what happened was I got eliminated. That is painful yeah. for Nick and Nicole. I mean, like, we, we literally fled London. We straight up fled London. Like, I... It was the day after I got eliminated. I was asleep. I was, I was catching up mm -hmm. on my sleep again. And mm -hmm. the, the phone in my hotel room rang. And I was like, that's, that's not good. Like, other than, like, being checked on, like, once a day, like, my phone was not supposed to ring. Mm -hmm. um, and I could not call out at all. Um, so my phone rang. And I forget who it was. But somebody was like, I don't know if you've, if you've seen the news yet today, but... Um, just to let you know, everyone's okay. Everyone's fine. Everyone's safe. And you're going to be okay. And I was like, thank you. And I was like, okay. And then I was like, okay, what the fuck is going on? And that's when I turned mm -hmm. on the news. 
and I'm, I'm talking, it was just a couple blocks away. There was a, oh, no. a, a bus that there, I think it was two buses and four tube stations had been bombed that day. And so then I was worried. I was real scared. Um, and then later that day, I mean, they, they eliminated Brie like real quick, if I remember correctly. I think they eliminated Brie like the next day. And normally it took three mm -hmm. days. But I, I, I swear I want to say it was like the next, the next day or the day after um, Brie was with me. And so after Brie was with me, that's when the production assistant, the PA came in and she like gave us a, a cell phone and was like, call your families and let them know that you're okay. Mm -hmm. So we called our families. We let them know that, you know, we were okay. And then I think like two days later we were, or maybe even the next day we were on a, a plane back home. Mm -hmm. We didn't even come back to LA. They just sent us straight home. Straight home. And, so, mm -hmm. and they were like, just be ready. We're going to call you at some point to come and do like the final runway. So then we waited and waited and waited. And then October came around and they were like, and like I said, three or four episodes had aired. So that was, you know, between four and five girls that were already gone. Mm -hmm. So the rest of mm -hmm. us came back to LA and we did the runway. Um, we did the runway thing. And like I said, that was fun. That was mm -hmm, fun. That was, um, that was when they, they tried to, that's when they pulled me out of bed at three o'clock in the morning and tried to get that sound bite out of me. And you so, said, hell no, we won't go. Mm -mm. <laughs> so if I, I remember correctly, it was me, Lisa, Brie. I remember Corinne was there. I don't remember seeing Kim, but she had to have been there somewhere. Had to be. Um, yeah, I remember a handful of us. Like, we got to, like, go and hang out at the roof. Um, we, we were staying at the Standard in L.A. Mm -hmm. And I remember we got to go hang out on the roof, and Naima was there. Because mm -hmm. she walked in the, the final runway mm -hmm. as well. So, like, we hung out with her, and we were, like, you know, we got to yeah, pick her brain about, like, the, her last year and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and she was really nice. She was really cool. She answered all of our questions. She oh, stayed nice. with us for hours and just, like, mm -hmm. hung out with us. She was so sweet. And then um, I remember the head of the network came and hung out with us for a little while, too. Oh, no. And, yeah. And I remember him giving me his business card and being like, if you ever decide that um, you want to try your hand at acting, you know, whenever you're done with modeling, he was like, give me a call. He's like, I'm sure I can find a place for you on one of my TV shows. And I was like, cool. And then I never mm -hmm. saw him again. <laughs> And I wish I could find that business card because I would straight up call him and be like, yo. <laughs> that business card. <laughs> I know. I was like, this is, I know it's been a while, but um, you told me when I was ready and now I'm ready. So, so this is a perfect segue to my, to one of my last questions for you because we're almost done. I got two more questions for you after this. How was your pursuit in modeling or acting after the show? I did not do well. I did not do well because... Um, I went to New York. Um, my, my, uh, my boyfriend at the time that I lived with, um, mm -hmm. he is, he's born and raised in New York. And um, so I went to New York all the time. I had never been before. Um, but I started going to New York like two, three, four times a year. And every time I was there, I would, you know, look for jobs and stuff like that. Um, and I just, I could not book anything, anything. So then... Um, I didn't know this, but like my boyfriend's mother, one of her best friends um, is Cindy Crawford's um, mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So um, I wish I could remember her name. I used to hang out with her all the time. So one day my boyfriend's mother looks at her and goes, Jayla's having a hard time finding, you know, jobs here in the city. She was like, do you think there's anything that Cindy could do? And she was like, I don't know, I'll ask her. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day, um, this my boyfriend's mother came to me and was like, um, so you have four, four interviews today. Oh. Yeah. So Cindy Crawford herself called four different agencies and said, I have a girl coming in. Um, her name is Jayla. And she's going to meet with you about potentially signing with you. So I was all excited. I was like, Cindy Crawford herself mm -hmm. called these places and was like, I got a girl coming in for you. Like, you know, show, show, her, show her what's up. Mm -hmm. um, and I just remember going into these agencies and I swear every single one of them asked me, how tall are you? And I was like, I'm five foot eight. And like, they were like, we don't, 
we don't sign girls under five foot ten. Every single one of them was like, yeah, you're not tall enough. You're not tall enough. You're not tall enough. You're not thin enough. You're not tall enough. And I was like, great. If Cindy Crawford herself cannot land me uh, uh, an agent or a job in New York, maybe this isn't the place for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely should have gone to California because they were, they were, much more lenient about height and weight mm -hmm. and you know what you look like new york was very you had to be five foot ten you had to be a stick you had to be able to do um high fashion and runway at a moment's notice mm -hmm. and just new york was not the place for me i mean i got some i got some decent like very well-paying jobs there but they were so few and far between it was never going to happen in new york it was never going to happen in new york and i was that's when i was like need to get back out to California, I need to call the head yeah. of the network, you know, I, and I had so many business cards from people in LA um, mm -hmm. that I had gathered while I was on top model, people that were like, um, you know, give us a call, we'd love to work with you. But the problem was, is um, my, my boyfriend at the time, my ex-boyfriend, he was adamant that we were going to move to New York. Mm -hmm. And so I had to make it in New York. So like, to, to him, California was not an option. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got a contract in Hong Kong, um, in 2006, they wanted me to come to Hong Kong for three months. Hong Kong was one of the few places that still would guarantee a model how much money she would make in the time period that I was going to be there. So I was supposed to be there for two and a half months. They guaranteed me $35,000. They were like, you will make this much money while you're here. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was all excited about it. I was like, I'm so ready. I'm like, that's where Elise from season one went. Mm -hmm. She's thriving there. She's mm -hmm. doing so good. Like she was like, screw med school. I'm out of here. I'm going to go live, you know, this other dream of mine. Um, so I was so excited. Mm -hmm. And again, my, my ex-boyfriend looked at me and he said, you can't go. And I was like, why not? And he was like, I have to go back to New York for the summer. You have to stay here and take care of the pets. And I was like, I can get someone to come and, and, and watch the pets watch for us. The, I'm like, I can have somebody, I can get somebody to house sit and, you know, pet sit for us while we're both gone. And he was like, absolutely not. He was like, I don't, I don't want a stranger coming into my home. Oh. And I, I don't trust someone else to, to look after our pets. He was like, you mm -hmm. have to stay here with them while I go to New York for the summer. And so I had to, I had to call them back and be like, I'm sorry, I, I can't go. So quite a, quite a few things mm -hmm. that, and so by the time I was 25, I remember I had just turned 25. Um, I had a friend that lived around the corner from me and he invited me over to just do like, a, I think he got like a new camera and he went to try it out. So he was like, come over and, and you know, we'll take some pics and stuff. And I was like, all right. And I just remember like looking at the photos and I hated all of them. And I was like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think I'm going to, I'm going to hang up my, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up my, my heels and I'm going to, I'm going to call it a day mm -hmm. because I was just, I was just so sick and tired of like, when I did book things, they weren't paid or they paid not enough. I got, mm -hmm. um, I got a job in Paris, mm -hmm. walking a show in Paris and I was mm -hmm. super excited um, the show was going to pay me, I think it was $1,500 to walk the show, mm -hmm. but my plane ticket was $2,300 for Paris. So just like, that's one Tender. thing that people really don't understand is like, unless you live in a hub like New York or, or LA or Miami or in, in Miami doesn't really pay. Um, but like if you, unless you live in some place that pays really well, like your travel expenses are just astronomical. Um, especially if you're trying to go to Paris during Paris fashion week. Mm -hmm. Um, so it just like the price of me traveling to like get to my jobs a lot of times was more than what I was actually going to get paid. So I just got to the point where I was like, I'm just going to stay home and bartend because I'm really good at it and I'm, I, I make money. So I was just, I mean, I loved traveling and I loved meeting people and I loved, you know, doing what I was doing, but mm -hmm. I just, I never had any money in the bank. I never had any money in the bank. I could barely pay my bills. I was constantly having to ask people for money. 
And I just, I just, one day I just looked at my photos and I was just like, I, I think I'm done. So. So I'm, thank you so much, first of all, for sharing that with me and with my friends who are watching. That is um, very powerful and it's very, it's real. Like, you know, it's real. And I appreciate you sharing that with us. I'm curious to know, how do you now in 2021 look back at all of that stuff? Like, like modeling or the show? Well, or both? Um, let me, let me clarify. Do, do you have any regrets? Are you, were you, were you able to work past um, any of those obstacles that you were experiencing with yourself professionally? And were you able to go into a better, happier place with, whatever it is that you decided to eventually go and do? Um, I mean, I definitely have a lot of regrets. Like I, like I said, I should not have gone to New York to, mm -hmm. to try and find work. I should not have done that. Um, looking back on it, like I should have gone to, to California. I should have, mm -hmm. I should have parted ways with my ex and said, I'm sorry. Um, but we're both really young and I need to focus on my career. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I should have gone out to California. I should have done, um, I, sh I should have done modeling out there where they're more forgiving of your height and your body type. And um, I should have, you know, called the head of UPN and been like, hey dude, I'm ready. What do you got for me? You know, this is, this is, I, I, this is my joke. Um, so this is right around the time that Supernatural started. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I convinced everyone around me that he was saving me a place for on Supernatural. And that it was supposed to be the Winchester siblings. And that I was supposed to be on that show. Um, but yeah, like I, I should have, I should have done that. Like I, I should not have gone to New York. I should have gone to California. I should have gone to Hong Kong. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I should have done. Um, yeah. I mean, and I, I definitely wish that I was who I am still an idiot. I definitely do a lot of dumb stuff and say a lot of dumb stuff all the time, but I'm definitely a more confident person now. And I'm, I'm definitely more secure in who I am. Um, yeah. One of my big things is to me, networking was asking for favors. And I was just brought up that you don't ask people for things. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand that's what networking is. Mm -hmm. If somebody hands yeah. you a business card and says, Hey, call me. You know, I'd love to work call with you them. sometime. You're supposed to, you're supposed to fucking call. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I mean, mm -hmm. look at, look at Ebony. Second one eliminated. Thriving. You know, she networked. You know, she networked. Uh, uh, Lisa networked. You know, she, Lisa knew everybody from the show. Everybody. Mm -hmm. um, she knew all the crew. She knew everybody behind the scenes, like everything. Um, yeah. I mean, networking actually what going places you where you're needed i'm what, currently what in tucson 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 arizona, arizona. okay are, are you still interested in modeling um i still do some from time to time okay. but it's literally just mm -hmm. with my friends you know i like sometimes my friends will call me up and be like hey um do you want to shoot i'm like sure mm hmm so, but I mean, okay. it's just, it's just, it's mainly for my social media. I'm not like, oh, these are going to be the pictures that are going to put me back in the game. You know, I'm, yeah. Well, listen, I'm, I'm not into fashion. I don't know shit about fashion except for 24 cycles of America's Next Top Model. But <laughs> from these chats, I have gotten a new bevy of friends. And I actually just spoke to a friend. I'm not going to say her name. She is a past top model girl. And she told me a great story she had from doing one of these lives. And so I'm gonna put you, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna put you in a group message with her. I, I can't make no promises because I don't know. It's only, I know she has a very nice, kind spirit. She's very nice and kind. And she told me about something that happened for her. So I'm gonna put you guys okay. in a group thingy and then I'll and we'll see what happens. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> Yay! Okay. So I have two last questions for you before I skedaddle because someone my, my phone is vibrating in my ass right now. They're like, get off the live. I'm like, I'm, I'm whatever, whatever. I'm talking to Jayla. Leave me alone. <laughs> is there, tell us in, in as many, few words and sentences as possible, but don't spare anything about that reunion. And no, it's not Lisa, guys. Oh, uh, but we do love Lisa Diamato. Um, About the reunion Cycle 5 had with 
Um, on the Tyre Bank show, I believe. Yeah. Anything that was cut yeah. out, left out? Oh, um, I don't think there was... I'm trying to think of, of something. Oh, I don't... Did we do, like, the whole, like, Kim thinking that I called her fat thing? I think no, that made I... it. I, th I thought that that made it on. Because that was something that people would give me, like, shit for for a while. They were like, you called Kim fat, and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I didn't. Um, I can't remember. I think I was so deprived of sleep that week, and I was so mm -hmm. hopped up on Red Bull that I can't remember. Gotcha. That's fair. Do you remember you giving Brie Benadryl and them making it a big thing about her being sleepy? Do you have anything you want to talk about about that? Oh, yeah. I just had somebody, like, comment on my photo the other day. It was like, you drugged people. What's wrong with you? How dare you? Oh, and I was, fuck. I was like, um, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sabotage the one person in the house that's had my back since day one. Like, no. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to sabotage somebody, it's going to be somebody I don't like. I'm just kidding. Um, no, so what <laughs> happened was... Um, hey, so Nicole. Uh, she came to me one day and she was like, I'm not feeling good today. She was like, I just, mm -hmm. I don't feel good. And I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, I don't know. She was like, she was like, I don't feel good. I feel sick. And I was like, oh no. Mm -hmm. And she was like, do you have anything? And I was like, all I brought with me is Benadryl because when I fly, I always get sick like mm -hmm. Im immediately afterwards. So, um, somebody told me it's probably going from one place to another. There's probably something about the new like city mm -hmm. you're in or I'm something about like, lag yeah. I think they said it was probably something about like the pollution or something like that, that I was having like an allergic reaction to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought Benadryl with me. I had literally nothing else. And mm -hmm. I was like, all I have is Benadryl. And she was like, do you think that'll work? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know how you're feeling. And she was like, just give it to me. And I was like, okay. So I gave her the Benadryl. And then, she, I mean, she wasn't feeling good that day, period. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I don't remember... Yeah, it, it was on the show. Like, when we were getting ready to go back to the hotel, Brie was literally laying on my lap in the backseat of this taxi because she was just, she did not feel good. Mm -hmm. She didn't feel good. And then the Benadryl probably made her sleepy. So mm -hmm. um, what happened was we get to the panel. She says, I wasn't feeling good that day. And I took something that made me sleepy. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what did you take? And she was like, I took a Benadryl. And they were like, who gave you Benadryl? And I think she might have said me. And they jokingly were like, oh, and you took it? You let mm -hmm. a girl give you a pill in a modeling competition? Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, yeah, like that, that wasn't calculated. And I was like, whatever, guys. Mm -hmm. And Brie was like, no, I asked for it. And, of course, that didn't make it in. So everyone thinks that I just was like, oh, you're not feeling well. Here, have a Benadryl. This will make you feel better. It was like, mm -hmm. no, she felt like shit. She wasn't feeling good. All I had was Benadryl. So she took a Benadryl, hoping that that would make her feel better. And it just made her tired. Mm -hmm. See, I didn't, I didn't even think about that because Benadryl doesn't make me tired. I think that's because like, I get all of my energy from like artificial substances. Mm -hmm. So to me, it didn't even like cross, like come into my brain that like that would make her tired. Mm -hmm. And I was not going to, I wasn't going to, uh, what's the word? Um, oh, I wasn't going to sabotage Brie. No, I mean, if there was, right. if there was one person I wanted standing next to me at the end, was that there. I would have, that I, I would have been just as ecstatic if she won as if I won. Mm -hmm. So that's some bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. I have another question for mm -hmm. you and it just ran away from me. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> Dang it. What? <laughs> oh. Do you have anything to say about the theory that Nicole, and I know we've talked about it throughout this whole chat, but do you have anything to add to the theory about Nicole being a pre-selected winner for Cycle 5? I do. I do. I have an opinion on it. We would love um, to hear it. I definitely think that a tall white girl was supposed to win my season. Okay. What makes you say that? Because, I mean, if you look at the, the, the winners of the cycles prior... They were shorter, not white people. Mm -hmm. So both Naima and uh, Eva were on the shorter side. I think Eva, mm -hmm. like, Eva might not have even been 5'7". 
Um, so I think that they were like, I think that because we were supposed to get signed to Ford, mm -hmm. um, I think that Ford was like, we need, we need somebody tall, we need somebody thin, and we need somebody white. Because when I went to Ford and I interviewed with them, they were like, you're too short. And re remember, I went to New York and they were like, we don't, hire, we don't, put, we don't have any girls on our roster that are under 5'10". Mm -hmm. How tall is Nicole? Nicole's 5'10". So, I mean, I, and I don't remember correctly. I think Nick might be 5'9", but I think Nick might be the same height as me. I think she might be 5'8". Mm. So... Yeah, I think that I definitely think that if it wasn't the producers that were like, hey, maybe we need to have a tall white girl win this season. I, I think that it definitely might have been like the agency might have been like, hey, I really think that, you know, you need to give us somebody that's more like what we want. What we want. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. So. so my last question for you, which is my question I ask everybody if you were standing before Tyra Lynn Banks in 2021 what would you say to her what would I say to Tyra I don't think I have anything to say to her I don't okay, well I mean I don't have anything good or bad like I said I think that we were a means to an end we were there uh to make her money um uh, she made a lot of money know, we... for she made millions of dollars millions mm -hmm. yep millions we were there to make her millions. money that's that's why we were there. She was not there to be our friend. She was not there to be our mentor. That's the preconceived notion that we had going into it, but that was not the case. Um, yeah, I, I I don't think that she really cared for any of us. Mm -hmm. So I just think that if if I was to see her, if she, if she remembered who I was, I would be like, "Hi, how are you? How, how have you been?" Um, I hope you're doing great. I mean, she follows me on Twitter for some reason, but like we've never had an interaction. Um, yeah, I just think that she just doesn't really care about us. I mean, everybody always asks us, like, oh my God, do you have her cell phone number? Like, when's the last time you talked to her? And I'm like, yeah, no, no. And I mean, and I used to be, I used to always tell people, I'm like, you need to understand that by I think like cycle seven, there had been like a hundred of us that had been on that show at that point. Mm -hmm. So you need to, you need to understand she does not have time for all of us. You know, maybe she has a couple of people that she still talks to, but you know, and that's, Oh, and that's weird too. Tyra and I are also birthday twins. So you guys share the same birthday. December 4th. Yep. Oh, shout out to Tyra Banks, wherever she is right now on this earth. Mm -hmm. If she's watching, Hey girl. Hi. <laughs> Oh, God, if she's watching, I should probably go get a lawyer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now, listen. Okay, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, it's way past. My, my NDA expired a long time ago. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And, and I mean, if Tara is the businesswoman that everyone says she, says she is, she should be happy that someone is still talking about her show many, many years later and with all the stuff that mm -hmm. happened with it. I think, I think that's smart business that you still have people curating content about your show. People still streaming it and watching it mm -hmm. and all the other stuff so yeah yeah she she does watch she does watch me from time to time i'm not going to tell me who who confirmed this like who confirmed this that she watches from time to time but she does watch from time to time so oh, hey girl no. what's the tea bring me some <laughs> ice cream overnight it <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> well jayla i must say and I'm going to tell a little bit of tea to the people. Everyone, Jayla was nervous about doing this because I'm assuming you bitches on the internet have been giving her a hard time. But I must say, Jayla, from watching this and um, from watching this, from talking to you and watching some of the comments, I believe you have mission accomplished because everyone has <laughs> loved you this entire time. I hope so. I'm sure I'm sure I'm going to look at my comments right now and it's going to be a whole different thing. But um, I mean, yeah, this was fun. I mean, like I said, I was, I, I mean, I was just worried that like, like I said, I thought you didn't like me. Oh, no. I thought you didn't like me. I, um, I was but like our, our, our DMs. I was like, you know, he seems like he seems perfectly nice. So I'm, I'm going to do it. 
if, if, if for nobody else, I'm going to do it for you. So. Oh my goodness. Thank you. That means of so much. Thank you. And I again want to apologize if I rubbed you the wrong way from that Lisa. From that Lisa no, um, like I said, I was Lisa just like, interview. I was like, okay. I was like, he's not a fan. That's, that's why, you know, and like tons of people, like probably like a couple dozen have been like, when are you going to talk to him? And you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't, I'm like, I don't think he really likes me. And I was like, that's okay. Like, he could, <laughs> he, you know, that's all right. I mean, as long he's not leaving me hate comments. So, I mean, that's fine. Um, no, but I was, I was completely wrong. And I'm glad that I did Yay! this. Yay! I had so much fun. I would, I would gladly do this again. <laughs> Yay! Because so, I may call you again. Do it. You know I'll do it if I can. Yeah, this makes me, listen, I am so, I love, listen, I love all of my chats. I love all of them. But I really love when something great comes out of it. Of course, the stories get told. But I love it like when you girls say, I felt this way walking into it, but I feel so much better leaving it and talking to it, it makes me feel so happy so happy so happy and again i'm grateful for you sharing your time space energy memories feelings opinions life all that stuff with me and my friends over here thank you i i have so much more if you ever want it <laughs> <laughs> you know what i probably should get you and lisa on a live together oh my gosh that would be so much fun they're oh my probably going to come unplug my internet from the wall and say, you have, you no longer have access to the internet, Miss Oliver. You're done. No, because Lisa and I, I, like, like I said, she's the last person I saw in person. Mm -hmm. Like, she was in town and she was like, yo, come hang out. And I was like, okay. And like, we, we, we literally, like, I walked into the room and I sat down. I sat, we, it was in a hotel room. I sat down in the chair in her hotel room. Like, I, like, threw my leg over, like, the, the armrest and stuff, just sitting in a way that I never sit. Because I was just, mm -hmm. like, so comfortable with Lisa. I was just like, what's up? What, what have I missed? And we just, like, mm -hmm. it was like we, it was like we had seen each other yesterday. Like, we just picked mm -hmm. right back up where we left off. Good, yeah, we love Lisa. I, li li I will wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I will see a text from Lisa, and I'm like, I'm afraid to open it. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa makes me laugh. Lisa makes me laugh. Oh no. But anyways, Jayla, again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everyone, please follow Jayla. Her Instagram is right here above. Hopefully, if I can work something out about Cycle 5, I can see you again with Lisa's crazy ass and maybe one special guest person. We don't know. We're going to keep our fingers crossed and we're just going to pray to the gods above that he blesses us with the things of the things. But in the meantime, we're going to yeah. be grateful for what he has given us. And Jayla, you have given us an iconic a and top model chat. Well, thank you. Uh, and I'll work on Brie for you, too. I'll try to, I'll try to get her to to hit you up yes yeah, yes because and you know and you know i i think i think i know why she hasn't responded which i can only fathom um i think the reason why she hasn't responded is because she probably doesn't want to bring the top model energy back into her life it looks like she's cultivated a beautiful life for herself she looks stunning mm -hmm. her life looks very happy and peaceful mm -hmm. and she she may not want to keep talking about this place you know I, I, don't, I don't know yeah. about how she feels about this show, but that's the only reason why I feel like she hasn't responded or acknowledged it at yeah. all. Because, you know, she probably just wants to keep it that way. Yeah, and I have no idea what happened after All-Stars either. Like, I have no idea. Like, I can't... Mm -hmm. I don't even think I've seen Lisa since All-Stars. I don't think I've even asked her about it, which is really rude of me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I haven't... I don't think I've asked either of them about what happened on All-Stars. Like, mm -hmm. I know that Lisa kind of talked to you a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I don't know what happened with either of them. Mm -hmm. So, you could... Yeah, we heard I mean, All-Stars was a, was a doozy. I need, to, I need to know. Get Lisa back on. Get <laughs> Lisa back. Yes. Let me call Lisa right now. <laughs> Seriously. Ever call mm -hmm. me. Be like, Lisa, I'm sorry. I should have asked you sooner. Please call me mm -hmm. and tell me what the hell happened. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Well, Jayla, I'm going to skedaddle. Thank you so much. We're friends now. We are. I'm so excited. Thank Call me anytime. Me. Yes, Call me anytime. I'm going to let you go. Oh, oh it's freezing. <laughs> Tyra, we bind you. Now, you waited all this time to start messing with the Wi-Fi. Leave our Wi-Fi alone. Everyone, 
Wave goodbye to Lisa from doing an a. Uh, why I keep saying Lisa? Everyone wave goodbye to Jayla from doing an amazing top model chat. Thank you for having I, me. Thank you, everyone, no, for coming. You're so welcome. Now, the way Instagram is set up now, um, Jayla, I don't know how to take people off this thing. Do you want me to Oh, go? I see now. I see now. I'm going to do it right now. Bye, Precious. Bye. <laughs> that was great. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being patient. Shout out to Jayla again for being patient with my family emergency earlier. We got an amazing chat. This makes me happy. I hope you guys are happy. And um, there's no homework. Just make sure you are returning back to class every time a bitch posts a slide because I told y'all hoes I had to take some weeks off, but I'm back. In, um, Jack's in it. I don't know. I just wanted to rhyme. I love you guys so, so, so freaking much. Hey, Melba Moore. Melba Moore is in the chat. Yes, I love you so, Melba Moore. And Melba Moore has told me she loves me. She watches the T.S. Madison Experience. Did you guys watch the T.S. Madison Experience every Thursday at 10 p.m. on WeTV? That's y'all homework. Go watch the T.S. Madison Experience. And until next time, guys, be sure to pray in Kegel. Daddy got a skedaddle to go to work. What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, the head nerd in charge, telling you to make sure you tune in every Thursday, of course, to see me. <laughs> and you can see my other friends and family doing the things of the things of the things listed. You do not want to miss it. It is family fun and crazy chaos. It's always some shit going on from every, it's so many twists and turns. You do not want to miss it. Zap in all you hoes away like it back